coin. Flower is the call? It is a flower. It is a flower. So Kinchit Shah and the Hung Hom JD Jaguars win the toss. Kinchit, what's it going to be? Uh, it's going to bowl first. Any reason for that? Uh, short boundaries and uh, first match of the tournament. So we're going to go with the ball. Have you had a look at the surface? What's your reading on the surface early on? No game played on it yet. Yeah, it's a fresh wicket with a bit of grass on it as well. So hopefully it can help the bowlers in the first six overs. Talk about your key personnel. We know we've got a few overseas players in. Who are the players you're going to be relying on? So we've got Darren Sammy and Johan back from last year. And uh, Ben Lachlan, who's just won the Big Bash. And uh, Vander Murray and Ricky Russells. But a quick word about your local players, because it's a wonderful mix between, of course, the overseas players and all the players who are now getting Hong Kong onto the map of world cricket. Uh, Nizakat Khan, he hit a hundred against the Sydney Thunder last year and uh, was very good for the Jaguars last year, hitting another hundred. So he's going to be the key local player for us. All the best, Kinchit. Thanks, mate. Let me get Riyad in there. Riyad uh, lost the toss batting first. Happy to do that? Uh, we would have liked to bowl first as well, but um, it is what it is. Uh, we just need to put up a good total on the board and hopefully we can defend it. Tell us about uh, some of the personnel in your side. Uh, we have Samuel Baji, we have Bopara, we have Tanvir, uh, we have Kyle from Scotland and we have a, a, a lot of good young talent, um, local talent. So I think we have a good combination with youth and experience and hopefully the experienced guys could pull their weight. Nice little Caribbean rivalry with Darren in the opposition. <laughs> Yeah, it seems to be everywhere we go is a bit of a Caribbean rivalry, but you know that's what franchise cricket is about, and you know hopefully we can come out on top today. Good luck, Riyad. Thanks, man. Well, that's the news from the toss. You can see the men in bright pink. The Hung Hom JD Jaguars have won the toss. They've decided to field first. Now let's have a look at a to quickly look at the surface. We saw. Kinshit Shah briefly alluded to it. It's a fresh surface, plenty of grass, but don't let the grass deceive you because the kind of clay here is actually conducive to the glass if you have a look at this. And while there might be a covering, it's not that you'll have the faster bowlers licking the lips necessarily. They'll be a bit early, but let me remind you that Netherlands were here last year. They played on very similar surfaces and in a four-day game, they put on 500 in the first innings and 400 was almost 400 is put on in the fourth innings of the game. So there is plenty to score for the batsman on this pitch once you get through those early overs. The average score, we reckon, is going to be around 160 or 170. So even the side who are batting first, they may have lost the toss. They'll still be looking to put something decent on to put pressure on the opposition. The first match between City Kaitak and the Hung Hom JD Jaguars all set. And of course, we've got Mark, the match referee, all the officials in attendance. Let's get to the toss for the opening game. Riyad Emrit and Kinchit Shah Riyad, you have the coin. Flower. Flower code. Well, it's a chilly afternoon here in Hong Kong as we get set for the 2018 Hong Kong. Well, it's a chilly afternoon here in Hong Kong as we get set for the 2018 Hong Kong T20 Blitz to get underway. We've got uh, the first match between...
Welcome to Hong Kong. The Blitz is back. It's the third Blitz. Are you ready? The tournament is getting better and better. It's back again. Bigger and better. Alu Kentons are ready for the Blitz. Looking forward to Action Pack Week in Hong Kong. See you soon. Uh, lip check, lip check. One lip, one lip, one. Lazy one, lazy one, lazy one. Are you hearing me, yeah. lazy? Three, three, three. Do a mic check on uh, regular and lazy. So just do a mic check. No, just take no, no, it. Just, just, just talk without pressing anything. Can you hear me? Okay, now talk on lazy. Press that. On lazy. So, yeah. So basically, when you're on commentary, and if I'm talking and you need at the same time, in case you wanted to say something to the director or the sound guy, just to say, can we have this, can we have that, you keep that press. But, yeah. yeah, but you won't need it, you need it, right? so you're fine. Just Correct, how about that? Back in a tick.
Welcome to Hong Kong. The Blitz is back. It's the third Blitz. Are you ready? Parliament is getting better and better. It's back again this year and it's bigger and better. Alun Kentons are ready for the Blitz. Looking forward to Action Pack Week in Hong Kong. See you soon. The Blitz is back for the third year and it's back bigger and better. The Hong Kong T20 Blitz from the Ting Kuang Road Recreation Ground right here in the heart of Hong Kong. The opening game featuring last year's runner-up City Kai Tak taking on the Hong Kong JD Jaguars. There's a look at the ground, very typical of the Hong Kong landscape. Often like to call it the cityscape and not the landscape. There's plenty of skyscrapers around, eavesdropping on what should be some great cricket action. Well, they feature every part of this uh, wonderful city of Hong Kong, which of course is spread out over Hong Kong Island. So much of the action happens there. The gladiators from Lantau, and from closer in, in Kowloon City, we've got the city, the city team from Kai Tak, the Hang Hom JD Jaguars from uh, the area where we see plenty of the ferries taking off. And of course, the Kowloon Cantons right in the center of Kowloon. Well, the spread of the teams gives you an idea of the geography of Hong Kong. And that picture also gives you a very very good idea of what this city is all about a vertical city they call it yes the new york of the east sometimes it's referred to and the focus is going to be on some great cricketing action if the blitz from the first two years is anything to go by we should be in for a treat not just the folk in hong kong but everyone watching around the world Young and old have gathered in Hong Kong. It's season three of the Hong Kong T20 Blitz. Just minutes ago, we had the two captains, the match referee, and I was with them at the toss. Well, it's a chilly afternoon here in Hong Kong as we get set for the 2018 Hong Kong T20 Blitz to get underway. We've got uh, the first match between City Kai Tak and the Hang Hom JD Jaguars all set. And of course, we've got Mark, the match referee, all the officials in attendance. Let's get to the toss for the opening game. Riyad Emrit and Kinchit Chah Riyad, you have the coin. Flower is the call? It is a flower. It is a flower. So Kinchit Shah and the Hang Hom JD Jaguars win the toss. Kinchit, what's it going to be? Uh, it's going to bowl first. Any reason for that? Uh, short boundaries and uh, first match of the tournament. So we're going to go with the ball. Have you had a look at the surface? What's your reading on the surface early on? No game played on it yet. Yeah, It's a fresh wicket with a bit of grass on it as well. So hopefully it can help the bowlers in the first six overs. Talk about your keeper, Snellby. You know we've got a few overseas players in. Who are the players you're going to be relying on? So we've got Darren Sammy and Johan back from last year. And uh, Ben Lachlan, who's just won the Big Bash. And uh, Randa Murvey and Ricky Russells. But a quick word about your local players, because it's a wonderful mix between, of course, the overseas players and all the players who are now getting Hong Kong onto the map of world cricket. Uh, Nizakit Khan, he hit a uh, hundred against the Sydney Thunder last year and uh, was very good for the Jaguars last year, hitting another hundred. So he's going to be the key local player for us. All the best, Kinchit. Thanks, mate. Let me get Riyad in there. Riyad uh, lost the toss, batting first. Happy to do that? Uh, we would have liked to bowl first as well, but um, it is what it is. Uh, we just need to put up a good total on the board and hopefully we can defend it. Tell us about uh, some of the personnel in your side. Uh, we have Samuel Baji, we have Boparo, we have Tanvir, uh, we have Kyle from Scotland and we have a, a, a lot of good young talent, um, local talent. So I think we have a good combination with youth and experience and hopefully the experienced guys could pull their weight. Nice little Caribbean rivalry with Darren in the opposition. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be everywhere we go is a bit of a Caribbean rivalry, but you know that's what franchise cricket is about and you know hopefully we can come out on top today. Good luck, Riyad. Thanks, man.
Well, that's the news from the toss. You can see the men in bright pink. The Hung Hom JD Jaguars have won the toss. They've decided to field first. Now, let's have a look at a to quickly look at the surface. We saw Kinchit Shah briefly allude to it. It's a fresh surface, plenty of grass, but don't let the grass deceive you because the kind of clay here is actually conducive to the glass. If you have a look at this, and while there might be a covering, it's not that you'll have the faster bowlers licking the lips necessarily. They'll be a bit early. But let me remind you that Netherlands were here last year. They played on very similar surfaces and in a four-day game, they put on 500 in the first innings and 400 was almost 400 was put on in the fourth innings of the game. So there is plenty to score for the batsman on this pitch once you get through those early overs. The average score, we reckon, is going to be around 160 or 170. So even the side who are batting first, they may have lost the toss. They'll still be looking to put something decent on to put pressure on the opposition. Quick look at the teams there. City Kaitak will be batting first and uh, they've got some continuity, of course, uh, right up top. Anshi Rutt, uh, might be Anshuman, his real name. He's always referred to as Anshi Rutt with uh, Kyle Kutzer from Scotland up at the top there and uh, plenty in the middle order. Ravi Bopara, Jamie Atkinson, so much experience there. And young Raag Kapoor will feature also in that middle order. Captain uh, Riyad Emrit, well, we'll see where he slots into the batting order. For the Hung Hom JD Jaguars, Ben Lochlin fresh off that victory in the Big Bash. Uh, see him uh, up and running early days. And uh, of course, the experience, already mentioned at the toss, Nizakat Khan, what a hard hitter of the cricket ball he is, Captain Kinchit Shah up there. And uh, in terms of uh, the overseas personnel, Roloff van der Merwe, Johan Boita from uh, South Africa. And Darren Sammy, well, uh, never mind where he's from, he's a world citizen. Always brings so much to any franchise he plays for. There's a lovely surface. Wonderful surroundings here. Time to say a quick good afternoon to someone who knows all the Hong Kong cricketers inside out as the head coach of the Hong Kong national team, Simon Cook. Simon, welcome to the commentary box. Yeah, good afternoon, Gotham. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's uh, very nice to see the sun out here, actually, after a week of uh, very cold weather last week, um, which is why the, the pitch has a little bit of green tinge to it. Um, I think ideally we'd have, would have wanted it a little bit whiter, um, but uh, I think as the week goes on, it'll get better and better and better, and I think uh, we, we're really in for a a treat uh, for some all the spectators here they're going to see some fantastic cricket um, played by some of the best players in the world and also it's going to allow some of our the best domestic players we have here to showcase their talent uh, on uh, on the biggest stage that they can tiny tiny bit more yeah that's middle stop johan boiter you see him very often uh, coming in early in the innings also likes to bowl at the death interesting to see how they use him He's a, he's a real competitor, great thinker of the game. Uh, as you say, he's, he's often used at the, at the beginning and at the end because he stays calm under pressure. He knows pretty much what he's trying to do all the time. He, he works batters out pretty quickly. Um, and so he's one of those ideal uh, candidates to, to bowl in those crunch times. Um, and he's going to be bowling to, to uh, Karl Kutzer, who had a fantastic tournament here last year. He was one of the leading run scorers uh, for City Kai Tak and uh, one of the main reasons why they got to the final last year. So this is going to be a, a really good battle. Yeah, chatting with some of the City Kaitak boys, they're very keen to put that uh, record straight from last year. Kowloon Cantons, of course, winning the tournament. They want to go one better this time. We're up and running and that could have been a wicket of the very first ball of the tournament this year in 2018. The Hong Kong T20 Blitz for 2018 underway. Roloff von der Merwe. In the action early on, we're going to hear him even when you don't see him. Yeah, he's a bit of a live wire, um, particularly that short, short mid-wicket area. Expect to see him take some great catches. He's only just evaded him on that uh, on that occasion, but he's a he's a live wire and uh, definitely one to be looking out for for, for some of these spectacular catches that we're, we're seeing around the world. Um, just saw one Sam Billings, for example, in the uh, Prime Minister's game in Australia, took an amazing catch, and obviously the ones in in the in the Big Bash recently. Um, the standard of fielding has become uh, very, very high uh, within T20 cricket all around the world, and it's taking those marginal catches. 
as Anchi faces his, his first ball and cuts it out to the boundary for uh, an easy boundary out square gets him off, off the mark off and running very very quickly he likes to start well Anchi run somebody who's made some really really big scores for the national team yeah he's, he's been one of our more consistent players right the way through 2017 and he's, he's just gone from strength to strength the shout there for LBW but that was sliding sliding down we're already seeing on this pitch there's not much spin it's just sliding on with the arm I don't think any any error in line or length is, is potentially going to be punished um, which is puts a bit of pressure on the bowlers but um, it's often puts a bit of pressure on the batters as well if they feel they've got to go for a 200 score again we see that ball skidding on and rushing Anchi, uh not letting him free his arms and that's probably where Johan's going to start working out where to bowl is maybe a quicker quicker flatter a bit more back of a length not letting the batter get underneath him that is likely to elude the field just the right amount of power put in that shot any harder he could have found the fielder on the boundary just finding his feet but uh, after that first boundary I think he'll feel good middle of the bat yeah that's right it's um, as you say the the ball has just got tossed up are the ones that and she's decided he's going to try and go after clean him up the experience of Johan Boiter picks up a wicket of the very first over of the T20 Hong Kong Blitz for 2018 Rod goes for six, it's seven for one. Let me be your air. Let me run your body free. No inhibition, no fear. Early wicket then for City Kaitak. Losing the toss, being asked to bat first. And they were facing the experience of Johan Boita, even though Anchu, Anchu Rat got a boundary to start with of his very first ball. Just a hint of turn there was. Yeah, it's just held held up nicely. It's the one that he's, he's kind of bowled a little bit slower as well. Um, nearly did him with the, the ball before that he slog swept. Didn't quite get there and um, clever bit of bowling, uh, like you say. Brings uh, Jamie Atkinson into uh, into bat nice and early. He's used to opening the batting for the national team. Uh, keeps wicket as well. He's a very aggressive player. Looks to uh, looks to go hard, particularly at the seamers. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Kinchit gives uh, Johan another over, or whether he uh, he continues or he goes with the with a seamer uh, in the in the in the next over at the uh, softball end. It's Kyle Christie who's uh, going to take the new ball. Uh, a young uh, bowler from Western Australia who was born in Hong Kong uh, has just recently come into our setup. Uh, has struggled a little bit with injuries, uh, with shin splints and, and an ankle jarring, but uh, we're looking for for him to really take a, a big step forward in this uh, in this edition of this tournament and also uh, through the rest of, of 2018. He saw his uh, blitz record there. Just the one ODI, the one first last game for Kyle Christie. And that's with that's with an offer. Very lucky to get away with that one. Jamie Atkinson could have put that anywhere in Hong Kong. Yeah, that, that's kind of right in, in Jamie's uh, in Jamie's arc there. Um, but uh, we'll see how uh, how Carl goes. He's had uh, he's recently had a cortisone injection in his in his ankle um, ten days ago. So he's he's not been he's probably a little bit short of match fitness at the moment. So we'll, we'll see how he goes. He offers something that we don't have a lot of, which is which is pace. Um, in the associate world, there's not many guys that bowl 140, 150 clicks. They're, they're generally around about the 130 mark. He, uh, he's back on a on a line and length, and I think that's a that's a great area on this pitch. First up with this brand new ball, a little bit of grass covering, um, and I think that's the area that's really going to cause a few problems. Yeah, I think this opening over from Kyle Christie will give us an idea how the pitch is playing with Johan Boita. We couldn't quite get an idea if it's coming on to the bat and what this grass covering really means. A quick single out to, to 
to mid on and a hit throw and hit the stumps but uh jamie well home uh yes the jaguars clearly feel there might be something in it early on with a slip uh they're, they're willing to to attack uh, and that's what's generally happening in um in t20 cricket now is you want to try and attack as much as you can and get some wickets and store run rates yeah got a quick quick glimpse of uh, ben lotton there he'll be itching to get going he's got that uh, trademark slower delivery Kyle's generally favouring full and straight here. Um, possibly might be slightly dangerous with this very short boundary. I think we're, we're here in the commentary box just behind uh, mid on. And uh, we, I kind of feel in the game. That is high. That is very high in the air. There's a fielder getting under it. He's got to be in the edge of the boundary rope and he gets it. That's a second wicket for the City Kaitak. Yeah, that's a huge wicket. Uh, caught there by Nadeem Ahmed down at deep square. Very, very high ball in a, in a really blue sky. So it's a, a, although it looked like a straightforward catch, those ones generally aren't straightforward. And he, uh, he, he's got a pretty good pair of hands. And uh, you can see the Jaguars there. They're ecstatic with that. One of the leading run scorers from last year uh, out pretty cheaply for two. This brings into into bat Ravi Bapara by the look of it. Um, a very, very experienced cricketer from, from England. Played ODIs, T20Is, lots of first-class cricket for Essex, uh, who won the championship recently last year. Uh, so he comes in with a lot of confidence. Very talented batter, but he's also a very underrated uh, bowler. He's got a very good slow ball at the back of the hand, which I'm sure we'll see in the second innings. Uh, but he's got a bit of work to do here. Uh, nine for two, uh, just coming out of the second over. Well, Kyle Christie will be raring to go. An early wicket. A wicket for Johan Boiter in his opening over. And a wicket for Kyle Christie to start things off. An experienced pair out there in the middle now. And I reckon we'll see a bit more of that from Jamie Atkinson with the two wickets having fallen. Nine for, ten for two after two. It's interesting now to see how they go and the, the trend now certainly in England is just keep going hard um, and here, here are the wickets here where Johan Bote a little bit of slower a little bit more turn um, and end up getting the wicket and Carl Kurtzer hitting a leg side ball nice and high out to deep square and Nadeem Ahmed taking a, uh, a nice straightforward catch there Nadeem we'll see him later left arm spinner um, it's unusual for him not to take the new ball he, he usually does it for for Hong Kong, uh, they've gone, gone with Johan Boter probably to counteract the left-hander of, of Anshuman. Um, but I think we'll see uh, we'll see Nadim later. Uh, change of bowling already, and we got Rudolf van der Merwe coming into the attack. Who's very very experienced cricketer, played for South Africa, has played a lot of domestic cricket in England, uh, and is now playing for the for the Netherlands. And he's a very influential player for for them both with bat and ball. He was a great addition to the Dutch side when he came in there after having played so much for South Africa of course it does help that uh, their languages are sort of first cousins Dutch and Afrikaans yeah that's right he fits in very nicely into their setup he's um, he's a really really competitive character and as you see, he's got a very, very good control of, of line and length. Uh, the the four-day game that you, you alluded to in the uh, in the pitch report, he bowled uh, magnificently in the first innings. We we got 500 in the first innings, and he went to uh, not even two runs and over. Uh, again, as we see the ball sliding down the, the leg side. That's a full pitcher. It's going to be a four. Boundary for Jamie Atkinson. That was asking to be hit, really. A friendly little full toss and off stump. Yeah, it's the first ball he's kind of tried to get up there a little bit. Um, just trying to entice, a, entice an error. Uh, Jamie, quick on his feet, through and, and punished it through through extra cover. Um, I think you'll see him trying to get out of the over now. Or leg stump line. Jamie's not a big sweeper of the ball. He'll look to try and hit extra cover, mid on, mid off. 
he feels he's in trouble, that's when you see him start starting to sweep. Remember, we're still inside the power play. Just the two fielders allowed outside the 30-yard circle for the first six overs of a 20-over game. Has that been a third wicket? The umpire says no. Was that bad and bad? Roloff has a quick glance to Jamie Atkinson, who sort of says, no, mate, next delivery. Just from the impact. I think he just slid on. Mm -hmm. um, slid on, top of the roll. Again, ball sliding in. Great finish to the over. 14 for two. Olaf van der Merwe was very keen. Thought he had a bat and pad for Jamie Atkinson. But really, the if you look at the breakup of the teams, they really represent what Hong Kong is all about. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what um, what was thought about when the original concept came in, was, was we wanted to try and represent um, every area of Hong Kong and make it very inclusive. The two big islands just uh, off Hong Kong, Lantau, Hong Kong Island. Often the centre of attraction for so much that happens around this vibrant city. There's that movement. Um, good. Ran in, hit the pitch nice and hard. Ravi might be a little bit short of, uh, of match practice here. He's been uh, probably cooped up in an indoor cricket centre in Chelmsford somewhere um, for the winter. But uh, a great start there from, from Carl Christie. Exactly what the captain would have wanted, particularly when he's posting a slip. He wants to see the ball going past that outside edge. That's uh, going to be cut off again, Nadeem Ahmed. On the boundary, and given that you have two fielders allowed outside the circle, I think Kyle Kutza will be a little upset that he picked out one of them, especially in the power play. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it's, it's always frustrating when that when that happens. You know, you, you speak to a lot of opening batters, and they love batting at the top of the order because there's not many fielders outside. They feel they've got a bit of a license, but uh, yeah, he'll feel himself a little unlucky to have picked out the man, particularly on that big side. It's, it's a, the biggest side on the ground. Again, Kyle just persevering with that full leg stump line and, and this time Ravi Bapara gets it square enough to beat deep square and also that man on the, on the short fine leg boundary uh, to pick himself up his first boundary. Yeah, that's a shot Ravi Bapara likes but that's a shot any batsman would like if you're going to stray down there. Just a friendly half volley on leg stump. And that's that's exactly what we want this tournament to do. Um, it, it's highlighting that you can't you can't bowl balls like that to world-class players. Um, you need to be on your game all the time, like we saw on the first ball. Can you bowl five more like that? Well, I can tell you where Ravi Bopara has spent part of his winter, away from Chelmsford, and that was in Bangladesh. And he was on the verge of becoming player of the tournament at the Bangladesh Premier League. He was outstanding with bat and ball until a chap called Christopher Henry Gale decided to hit 18 sixes in the final and snatched away the man of the tournament from poor old Ravi. That's what these big players do, isn't it? They step up when, they, when their game uh, really warrants it and, uh, and they, they bring out those real match-winning performances. That's what the IPL, that's why they pay the money they do. that's ultimately where it's going this the, the franchise cricket it's it, cricketers are becoming commodities and uh, you know they the higher your price goes the, the more innings like that you put together the the higher price you demand um. many of the big names here at the blitz Kumar Sangakara Dwayne Smith and Darren Sammy the ever animated Darren Sammy it's a very good finish to the over from Kyle Christie. It's 21 for two. She starts just to, just to see the Siddiq Kaitak batting card. Um, two early blows, Carl Kurtzer, Nanshaman Rath going, departing early. Uh, one to uh, Carl Christie, getting caught in the deep square leg boundary. And uh, for two, 
and Anshuman Rath getting undone in the first over for six. So there's a bit of a rebuilding process going on here. Jamie Atkinson six off 11. Ravi Papar has moved swiftly onto seven from four as uh, Rudolf, Manover, Random, Rudolf van der Merwe continues. Got a couple of the all-rounders already into the action in the middle order. Let's see uh, Rolof van der Merwe do a bit of that once he gets into uh, his bowling attack. Likes to flight the odd one up after he's fired the first few in. Yeah, he's aggressive. He, he wants to try and take wickets. Um, and why why wouldn't you at this stage of the game when uh, you know Siri Kaitak are really under under the pump? As uh, Carl Kurtz squirts ball out to uh, extra cover boundary for, for two runs. They're, um, they are battling a little bit here and uh, you get the feeling you get a, one more wicket here and uh, they could be wobbling a little bit. Yeah, the likes of um, Captain Rhea Amrit, Soel Tanvir. Both have plenty of batting credentials, particularly in this format of the game. Tanvir in particular, off late, started enjoying batting up the top of the order in the Caribbean Premier League. He came at number three, even opened the batting on one occasion. So he fancies himself as a batsman. Let's see where he uh, comes on as a floater in this order. Naturally very aggressive player, isn't he? And, and that's uh, one thing that T20 has done is, is those those bowlers effectively or guys that are used to bat down the lower order who we all knew had, had good eye-to-hand coordination and were just naturally aggressive. Suddenly it's, it's really opened... Uh, the game has opened up their roles, uh, and, and we saw we saw Sunil Narayan start open the, opening the batting uh, in the IPL recently. And again, this is really really good bowling from the JD Jaguars. They're really controlling this run rate, just trying to build the pressure, build the pressure. Something will we'll give eventually. Uh, And they're hoping that they can keep them down to about 150. They'll, they'll feel very, very confident uh, in, in chasing down this, this score in this opening game. Oh, that's just over extra cover. The Jaguars thought they had number three. Roloff certainly thought he had number three in the bag. But Jamie Atkinson just making a little bit of room. I reckon he got just that right amount of elevation. Yeah, he's a very powerful man. Jamie holds, holds the, the bat right at the top. Uh, he's just scooped it over. That extra cover is almost right on the ring. So it's, it's, the plan has been set. Um, just didn't quite make it. Follows that up with a, with a single out to deep square. It's Ravi Vapara back on strike and the score is 29 for two. Well, um, if you happen to be on your phones and you're not having a long conversation, you could just uh, have a look at your uh, handset, download the official T20 Blitz app. This is, of course, for folks in Hong Kong, subscribers in Hong Kong. Scores, updates, everything you want to know about the Blitz. All you got to do is get on the app. Yep, she's getting a reminder of that as well. It's a great platform um, and uh, our friends at Accenture who, who put it together for our last event um, have really done a great job there. Here he is nice and early in the power play, Ben Lochlin. Now I'll be interested to see what length Ben bowls here, whether he's going to bowl the same length as Carl Christie, who, who I felt was probably a bit short. Uh, or he's going to really look to run in and hit the pitch. Uh, short boundary straight back past him, so it would uh, probably indicate that he's going to uh, he's going to try and uh, hit the pitch nice and hard. Yeah, just hasn't found his uh, radar yet. It's uh, rare to see from uh, Lachlan. I know they have some hectic celebrations down in Australia. Won the Big Bash recently. I reckon he's. Uh, his radar is still up there in that celebration. Yeah, he might be a bit fuzzy still, mightn't he? First time for the strikers, Adelaide. Yeah, first time for the strikers. Um, 
surprisingly, the Scorchers didn't win it. Um, you know, they've been dominating T20 franchise cricket. You see the first slower ball of this innings. Um, well, well disguised. Interestingly, that he's gone to a slower ball straight away as a as a backup. Um, we thought that he would still be in there trying to trying to get the the ball past the outside edge there. Yeah, he spoke at the Big Bash just about early evening. Depending on where you are in Australia, early evening on the West Coast, late evening on the East, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, Brisbane. Quick shout out to our friends in, on Fox Sport Australia. We're watching the third edition of uh, Hong Kong T20 Blitz. Not just um, Australia, but uh, going around the world. Broadcast in the subcontinent and Neo Sports, iCable Sport in Hong Kong. Did mention Fox Sports. That's going to be a bound. He just squeezes it out almost. Not a full fledged stroke from Jamie Atkinson. So as long as there's four runs in the bank, he'll still be smiling. Yeah, that's right. You just take take the runs where where you can. Like we said, Jamie very favours that extra cover area. He'll stay leg side, really try and get it over the top of extra cover. As he opens the face, it uh, really brings that short third man into into play. And again, resorts back to a slower ball. So it seems like when he's when he's under pressure, Ben Lachlan, he seems to resort to a change of pace. Um, that really nice change of pace where the ball just keeps swinging out. Um, just to finish up there, BT Sport in the UK, Star Times in Africa, ESPN in the Caribbean, lots of players from that part of the world playing here, and OSN in the Middle East. Oh, he's bowled him on the last ball of the power play. City Kaitak have lost their third wicket, and it's a big one. Ravi Bopara departs, and Ben Lachlan, just a bit of deceptive movement there. He can do that to you. Ravi Bopara departs for 11, the power play finishes, 37 for 3. Again, I think it was that slower ball, uh, this very, very good slower ball that comes out of Ben Lockton's hands. And it just continues just to drift and swing away, lures the batsman in. I think what Ravi did there was he just got his bat away from his pad. We'll see it here as it comes up, just bats away from his pad, drags the inside edge in. and. On it goes onto the stumps and uh, clever bit of bowling. Really puts City Kaitak under the pump now. So it's a very productive power play for the Hung Hom JD Jaguars. Lots will now depend on uh, Jamie Atkinson. Yes, if you now got um, two Hong Kong players at the, at the crease, Jamie's in already, 15 off 16 balls, and he's joined by Azaz Khan, who was the vice captain of uh, Hong Kong. He's a very up and very promising up and coming all rounder, seam bowling all rounder. Um, brilliant to see City Kai Tak in entrusting in him this high up the order. Uh, they obviously feel he's hitting the ball really nicely. He's just come back from uh, Australia, where he's been for the last month at uh, in Canberra, playing some club cricket. Doing very, very well, scoring lots of runs, scoring lots of wickets. So uh, this will be an interesting battle. Nadim Ahmed comes on as well. And Nadim is one of our, our best left-arm spinners. Uh, probably the most senior player we have in, in Hong Kong, most experienced player. It's be an interesting battle. Starts off with a fairly standard, standard ball. But again, we just see a little bit of low bounce, a little bit of skid on. Potentially could be uh, chopping the ball on if Jamie is uh, continuing to give himself room outside this, this leg stump. They've persisted with the slip uh, pretty much from the start of the innings. We're uh, now outside the power play. Can have uh, more fielders outside the circle, just the two allowed in the first six. 
Captain Kijit Shah, just having a word with Nadeem Ahmed. I think they just want to change the field for Azaz. Want to put a bit of pressure on him, I reckon. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Azaz, Azaz tends to play a little bit out in front of his pad and a little bit across the ball. So uh, his, his, the danger ball here, and Nadeem will know this, the danger ball is that ball that just pitches on, off stump, just outside, and just keeps running back onto, onto off stump and middle stumps. And Azaz will be desperately keen to try and keep his head going through mid on try and think about hitting through through mid on which is unusual against the left arm spinner gets off strike first ball which is going to make him feel a lot better uh, azaz is one of the cleanest strikers of a, of a ball particularly against the uh, against the seamers the spinners that he's, he's struggled against in the, in the past and it's where this is great where you've got two guys three guys who actually know each other inside out You're listening to Darren Sammy. I'm loving that. You'll always hear him in a cricket match, no matter where he is, whether he's at slip or deep mid-wicket on the boundary. Again, Jamie can persist with a run down and doesn't quite get there, so just pads, pads it out to uh, mid-wicket. Himself off strikers again. We just see a little bit of grip in the in the pitch as Jamie pushes at that. Uh, possibly inducing a, a potential court and bowl. Yeah, you were reckoning that with a bit more of sunshine, you'll have the ball coming on to the bat better as the tournament goes on. Yeah, definitely. Um, as the uh, as the sun stays out, it gets a, a bit more rolling into it. Um, it'll start going uh, a bit more whiter, and it will get better and better as we come to the end of the over. And it's 41 for three. Yeah, that's what's happened in uh, the first six overs. The power play started with a boundary and Shirat. Kyle Kutsa finding the fielder on the boundary. That was the second wicket to fall. Kyle Christie getting uh, the wicket. Near thing and then right at the end of the power play, Ben Lachlan in business. Yeah. Very, very good power play for uh, the JD Jaguars. Uh, so we see the backdrop of a typical Hong Kong skyline. Lots of uh, apartment blocks. They've only recently, recently gone up. Um, they've obviously got a, an amazing view of this tournament. Um, with all these buildings going up uh, around Hong Kong in general, it's it's basically because of the. Uh, Gonna see another wide down the leg side as he again once he tries to, to push push through that full pace ball it just seems to slide down the leg side a little bit. Um, yeah, we uh, the, just talking about the the flats at the at the back there. Um, I think each one of those flats is around 700 square feet, and I think they start at around 25 to 30 million Hong Kong dollars each. Um, real estate here is. Uh, extraordinary extraordinarily um, expensive given that we have this uh, Ting Kuang Road recreation ground which is such a large vast expanse we'll come back to that I'm thinking it's not just the flats for sale wonder what this plot of land would be worth it's very expensive cricket ground it is a very expensive cricket ground and um, Hong Kong Cricket Club who were based in Chater Road on Hong Kong Island uh, down in the city, they were they were moved up uh, onto uh, onto a hill. Uh, so it's similarly located on, on Hong Kong Island, uh, but that uh, that real estate there was was hugely expensive. As we see Ben Lachlan coming in again and bowling another slow ball. Seems to be that's that's what he goes back to, and and you can. You can start to see actually in his load up. You can see when he's going to bowl this slower ball. Um, so maybe the uh, all the teams will be watching this this coverage and, and having a look at seeing if they can get some visual cues as to how how they're going to pick it um, because it's all very well picking it. You've got to play it. And. Uh, Got a very good view as uh, Lachlan was uh, coming up to bowl there. I mean, 
the knuckleball and various uh, techniques he uses, there's a point you reach where you almost see the quicker delivery is his change-up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, absolutely. And I think that's exactly where it is, it's starting to go. Uh, where you, go, you see, it, see it there. Set in the hand and then gradually either either he'll keep his fingers on it or he'll keep the fingers split off it and the idea whether it comes out seam up and swings a little bit or scrambles the seam um, it's just becoming trying to become not predictable um, and, and as you say it's you go the other way actually it's uh, your quicker ball suddenly is, is actually your variation slower ball bouncer so we've seen just about everything in these uh, in these 12 balls so or these uh, 10 balls so far. He's got a good bit of movement going away from the batsman. He's got his only wicket at the end of the power play from one that was just going away from the batsman. Perhaps Popara would consider himself a bit unlucky that he got an inside edge right at the fag end of that power play. <laughs> Ezaz uh, gets that away for a single. And it's the 8.47 for three. There we are. We're in that uh, that little tent just to the left of the sight screen there. Um, it almost feels like we're uh, we're right in the game here. I think if uh, we have maybe even when Wahab Riaz is bowling uh, tomorrow, we, we could feel like we, we could be taking a catch. Yeah, especially some of the straighter hitters of uh, the cricket ball who like the arc, the V, long on to long off. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're probably we've got Darren Sami fielding here at, at short 45, and I think we're, we're maybe 15 feet away from him. Nadeem Ahmed and the keeper go right up immediately. That's the ball we were talking about right there. It's a four, or off stump, fourth stump line. Ball just slides back in. And, and for someone like Azaz, it just threatens. As a left arm spinner, you're always threatening the, the stumps there. And with Azaz just coming across the line of the ball, it's an area where he's uh, he is going to be exploited by Nadeem. Yeah, interesting to see the approach of Ezaz Khan been pushed up the order we saw his uh, average around 11 but you really don't want to look at averages he's got a strike rate around 100 and that's what really you want to focus on in this format of the game again that's another another good bit of bowling by uh, by Nadim not quite letting Jamie get to the ball Jamie's really keen to to dump that ball over into the softball courts um, over the head of Nadeem Ahmed but he's just pulling it back every now and then and not letting him get there Azar's much more happy to, to play those balls off the back foot punch it down towards long on through, through mid wicket Nadeem changes the field now deep mid wicket goes out just to try and protect his over Bit of thinking. Again, they might get two here. <laughs> Nina Shah in nice and nice and quick. Cuts off the opportunity for getting two. Yeah, strike strike rates are interesting. Um, for from my perspective, I you know you look at uh, all the players around the world and their strike rates. Nadim finishes with a with a dot and uh, takes the score to 50 for three in the ninth over. Uh, strike rates are, are interesting because it depends on your strike rate during a phase of the game. Well, I just want to remind everyone of uh, the teams that are here. We're going to see a final between the top two teams on uh, on the 11th city high tech and uh, the hung home jd jaguars playing the opening game we've got the galaxy gladiators from lantau island the kowloon cantons of course um, the hong kong united team as well <laughs> five top teams vying for the title of 2018 t20 blitz champions 
Kowloon, the defending champion, City Kaitak, were the runners-up last year. They're playing the opening match here. They've lost the toss. They've been asked to bat first by Kinchit Shah, the captain of the Hung Hom JD Jaguars. You see Johan Bota back into the attack, uh, bowling at the short end. And again, we, what we uh, talked about at the start of the day, it's been brought on in a crunch situation. Try and get a wicket now. They might try and target this short, short boundary. And he's exactly the sort of player that you want to be in that in that sort of battle. Knows exactly what he's trying to do. He knows how he's going to try and get, get him out. If we take the pace right off, get him to hit square to the big boundary. It's fascinating to see someone like Boerta. He's uh, We've seen him bowl at every stage of a T20 innings. He's opened the bowling. He's bowled the last over of the innings sometimes. We're seeing him now coming in the middle in the 10th over. Sort of a consolidation phase at times. If he had his way, he'd bowl all 20 overs, really. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. <laughs> he would. There you go. That's exactly what we're talking about here. He's taking the pace off. Try to get Azar's hitting to the big, big side, and he's got enough on it to get it for six. That is the first six of this tournament. Kinchit Shah talked about the smaller boundaries, but that's a big one. That would have to be the longest boundary on this ground. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's probably easily 70, 80 metres. That might be a no ball. Very high ball squared it out. Wow. The umpire lets him go. You were right, Simon. That was that's of course the previous one that he made good contact for six. But this one. I think the umpires will, will basically say, are oh, we uh, he advanced down, he made it into a full toss. Um, might have been a little bit harsh there, but there we go. At the end of the 10th over, we're 60 for three. We look at the City Kai Tak batting card. A uh, couple of early blows for JD Jaguars, removing Carl Kurtzer and Shaman Rath for low scores. Jamie Atkinson rebuilding nicely here with Azaz Khan. They're actually going to have to start accelerating pretty soon. The the likes of Raj Kapoor and Riyad Emirat, Wakas Barkat. I think we might see Sohil Tamveya maybe come right up the order uh, as next man down just to try and uh, start accelerating this uh, this City Kaitak innings. Again, Nadim bowling very well, not letting Jamie get his leak, get his arms through the ball. Desperate, desperate to come down. You can feel something happening at this point. It's his third over uh, on the trot for Nadeem Ahmed. Very experienced Nadeem Ahmed already in the game, taking a good catch on the boundary. That's down the ground, that should be straight down the throat of the field, there it is. Nadim Ahmed is delighted and that is a huge wicket. Jamie Atkinson. And that is a big, big wicket for the Jaguars. And they know it, Nizakat Khan, the fielder down there on the boundary. And City Kaitak will be disappointed. Atkinson goes there, 60 for three. That is a huge uh, breakthrough. Nizakat Khan was the man who took the catch. He's going to be key when uh, they come out to bat. Word of encouragement from Darren Sami, not that uh, he's ever short of that. Nadi Mahmoud bowling his third over in succession. What a spell it's been. One for seven in his third over. And as we expected, Sohil Tanvir comes out to the middle. We suspected he'd be a floater in this batting order. And here he is at number six. Yeah, we just mentioned it. 
Nadim in the middle of a really good spell and you can actually actually real really feel that something was going to happen particularly with Jamie who's getting more and more agitated and and uh, the wicket has come you mentioned the experience of Nadim Ahmed what a spell it's been from him one for seven already in his third over getting through his overs quickly Yeah, look, he's, he's a quality performer. Um, he's got a very nice, repeatable action. Um, when he gets on wickets that spin, he's, he's, he is a genuine match winner. Uh, and this is going to be an interesting uh, tussle now. Um, Sohil Tanve, he's, he's not going to hang around here. Uh, I suspect he'll, he'll look at a couple and then he's going to look to try and take on uh, probably this, these nice straight boundaries that he's, he's got here. Yes, so El Tanvi just get a feel of the ball. 62 for four. Yeah, you want to ease into this innings. That's uh, wickets that we've had so far, right at the top. Johan Bota, the first one. Then it was Kyle Christie picking up the wicket, Nadim Abad in the action. Very long boundary there, that was Kyle Kutzer. Boparo was the third wicket on the stroke of the last over of the power play. And then Atkinson. And you just see exactly what we were talking about with Jamie. He wanted desperate to come down, desperate to try and hit it over extra cover, but with the ball not spinning quite so much uh, in these early games, just keeps sliding on, takes the inside edge. Because he is a powerful man and there are quite small boundaries here, it means that long on and long off suddenly are in the game more often than they, they would normally. Interesting to see uh, Ezaz Khan's role now. Obviously batting with Jamie Atkinson, he would have had a bit more of a license. But now, some more responsibility given that they've lost their fourth wicket. They've lost really the cream of their batting order. You heard that over on Lantau Island, their appeal. Yeah, just sliding, I think. Uh, sliding down, missing, missing leg stump. Bit of a, an optimistic call there. But again, we see that the pitch just sliding through. It's not this normal, traditional turn that we see here at Tinkwong Road. With regard to roles, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It depends on what Sohil's um, role is when he's come out. Is it is it going to be to, to be the aggressor, in which case Azar's probably needs, just needs to give him the strike as much as he can whilst still taking his boundary options when available? Uh, or is it that actually they just both need to keep going? Oh, you can see the jackets are on. Perhaps not as heavy. About 48 hours ago, Simon, those jackets you saw a moment ago would have been uh, about double that. It was really, really cold, not even getting past single digits, even in the daytime. Well, I can tell you I had four clothes, four jackets on uh, in a couple of days ago. It was brutally cold. Just not, the houses and the infrastructure here is just not built for it. Oh, that might be close. Yeah, good call, Simon. That was definitely closer. The previous one was going down the leg side. This time, a more polite appeal from Johan Boiter. And the umpire answers in the affirmative. That's a big, big wicket again. Tanvir obviously sent down to accelerate. Yeah, they've started well, uh, the Jaguars, and looking looking down on, on paper, they're a very, very strong side.
Yeah, that's more like the kind of a tie you'd see in all of Hong Kong about 48 hours ago. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how the, the, the temperatures do fluctuate here as uh, as we go through this, the seasons. It's quite nice. In the summer, it's 30 degrees, but it's generally 90% humidity. And, uh, and in the winters, it can get down low as it's six or seven. Um, but uh, Wakas Barkat coming into bat here. Recently has forced himself back into the World Cup qualifiers squad, which was announced last week. Um, so he's uh, he's on the on the back of some very very impressive domestic T20 form uh, through through January. Uh, he's a, a very talented batsman, talented leg spinner, probably one of the best fielders in Hong Kong, as also one of the best thinkers. So this is actually a great position for him to be in, uh, along with uh, with the Zars to see whether they can get themselves up to kind of a 150, 160 score, which is what they're going to need as a minimum, I think. Keeps wicket a bit as well, Vakas Barkat. He has been known to keep wicket a little bit. Um, not recently. Uh, we've had uh, actually an influx of wicket keepers. So Jamie Atkinson has been the primary wicket keeper. Scott McKechnie, who's, been, who's not playing in the Jaguars team, uh, is also a wicket keeper. Oh, there's a slip and a miss field there, which is going to allow... Back has to get off strike. 65 for 5 at the end of 12. Time for uh, City Kite to sort of reassess. Yeah, I think it's um, it's going to be important that they do reassess uh, properly. And like we said, uh, if they can go at 11 runs and over hit from here on in to get 150, that's going to be a really good score, I think. You know, 140 might be a bit of a challenge. The, the Jaguars batting lineup is particularly strong. Um, and uh, yeah, I think 150 is going to be a minimum. Yeah, 150 is something they'd like to be at. Uh, as you said, 11 runs and over is what they'd need. Captain Rayad Emrit, he's got the uh, jumper on. Not sure he's very keen to come out to bat yet. He too, like Sohel Tanvir, often a floater in a T20 order, but he's the captain. He decides when he comes in, when he doesn't. Yeah, it's, you know, the, the Jaguars are, are very spin dominated and uh, the, the, what they're going to have to do from here on in is target which spinners they're going to target and which boundaries they're going to try and hit to. Knocking it around here is, is not necessarily going to get them to a, to a score that they can actually actually defend so uh, one of them's gonna have to start start going a little bit and I think they need to they do need to start targeting the short boundary certainly straight and also the the boundary the longer boundary towards the softball the softball end and the Deem Ahmed will be finished after this over uh, he's bowled very very well with lots of control as we see the uh, replay of so he'll Tanvi out LWs, no doubt about that. There's a great shot. Beautiful connection. Straight over the City Kai Tak box, which they will be ecstatic about. I think they want to, they'll want a few more sixes to be disappearing over there before this innings ends. Very appropriate place to hit that. Few of their uh, guests, VIPs family members just reminding them that yep that's us in the yellow runners up from last year not the best start to 2018 but if uh, Vakas Barkat and Ezaz Khan can get a little partnership going a mini partnership still got Raj Kapoor in the hut still got uh, Captain Rayar Emrit to come yeah and I think once once Nadim's bowled out in these in these last two balls another single out to uh, to point uh, they actually going to start having to target certain bowlers and I think uh, that the the guy who just fielded that la that last ball Tamir Ahmed he they could be he could be the guy that they will target um, Walker jammed in as he finishes out the over 13 overs gone 75 for five What a spell it's been from Nadeem Ahmed. Four overs, one for 19. Figures looked even better before he was hit for that big six, but certainly an excellent spell from him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, really showed there exactly what he's about. Quality spinner. We see uh, 
Talking about a bowling change at the moment, Kinchin and Johan Bota will work out who they're going to bowl next. We see the uh, Hong Kong Jaguars bowling figures, Johan Bota going, going well, two wickets, one very early on. Kyle Christie picking up Kyle Kurtzer in, the in his first over. And uh, Nadeem Ahmed down the bottom with probably the outstanding figures so far. One, o one wicket for uh, 19 runs off his four overs. So they haven't gone outside the, the five bowlers. Kinchit Shah's rotated the five so far. Interesting to see if they do go to a sixth option for the moment. Yeah, so they were having a big conversation earlier, um, Kinchit and Johan Bota, and uh, they've decided to go back to Carl Christie. A bit more pace on the balls. See how he goes here. Like I said earlier, Tanvir Ahmed, who's in the Jaguars lineup at the moment, um, it'll be interesting to see where, where they're going to bowl him and when they're going to bowl him. He's, he's been renowned as a death bowler. Uh, got good skills with slower balls and Yorkers. I suspect he'll end up bowling uh, the far end and he might even bowl the, the, the last two or three overs from, from that end. A bit of a DJ Bravo type role. Come on in the last six and bowl maybe two or three overs in a spell. Yeah, that's right. It'll be interesting to see how, uh, how these guys go now because they're going to have to start targeting these seamers because they've struggled against the spinners. Um, so I think you might see some uh, some big hits. As we see, uh, yeah, no matter what the hits, uh, get, join the conversation on Facebook, the Hong Kong T20 Blitz fa Facebook page. Already plenty of talking points in just the first 14 overs. We're in the 14th over of uh, the 2018 tournament. Of course, uh, you want to tweet. Yeah, if you want to tweet, you can uh, tweet us at uh, HKT20Blitz and uh, join the conversation there. It's Carl Christie. Balls full and, full and straight and he's got, a, he's got his field set, deep long on, deep mid wicket, deep square leg. Fairly, uh, fairly clear plans. He's going to try and get it up and under the batsman here. You'll start to see uh, someone like Wakas Barkat in particular sit nice and deep in his crease and then look to uh, take on the boundary back towards us in the, in the commentary tent. Well, that's nearly coming our way, but I think it's just over our heads. Good call, Simon. Yeah, nice and nice and deep small boundaries here you just need to get it up uh, he's probably hit that about 60 meters there you go just see as ours just nice swing of the bat just gets it up into the wind and uh, ball goes for six good news for another strong shot out towards deep mid wicket I think that's going to be four as well City Kaitak innings really starting to, to move forwards now with these two, Wakas Barkat and, uh, and Azaz Khan. Yeah, good news for, uh, for Hong Kong, uh, Cricket Hong Kong, is that the ball stayed in the ground. These tiny grounds, if it goes over the, over the back of these commentary boxes here, we uh, unfortunately can't get them back. Good placement there, he was thinking of a second, decided against it, good over for the City Kaitak, it's 88 for 5. <laughs> 13 runs from that previous over, the first one, it was almost a jab for 6, and then more of a flourish of the bat when he got that boundary. Yeah, Zars very, very confident at the short balls. Uh, not so confident hitting, hitting straight like that. And he was very clear that he just tried to really concentrate on, uh, on technique. You see the City Kai Tak scorecard. It's really starting to highlight, highlight the importance of Azaz Khan's innings here. 33 from 25. Wakas Barkat has really been the player that's come in and really put some momentum into this innings. And, uh, and Azaz is... It's actually uh, feeding off of that. You see Rulof van der Merwe into the attack and uh, a back cut out towards uh, 
deep point, gets another two, and the scoreboard really starts to continue to move forwards. Also illustrates the importance of understanding which player can play a role at which part of the order, because he would have been scheduled to come lower down the order. And good move from the team management and, of course, Captain Rear Emrit to push him up the order. Yes, definitely. And they really showed... Um, really showed uh, a really cool calm head here and, and they're, they're both Azars in particular has batted here in a in quite a tricky situation and his roles probably changed a couple of times his partners have come and gone and he's um, really played quite a mature innings here Wakas Barkat is is a, is a like I say a, a very cool calm head he, he thinks well about the game he's a good athlete both of these players are quick between the wickets so I think you're going to start to see more and more twos and quick singles which is going to hopefully keep uh, building that momentum along with the boundaries a couple of twos in this uh, over already something in this format of the game often underrated talk about the fours and the sixes and occasionally rotating the strike with singles oh he's a little unlucky there he could have had him instead he's going to get four the bowler should have won that battle. Instead, it's four to the batsman's name. What a cruel game this is. I was just going to say exactly that. It is a cruel game, isn't it? Um, you know, bowl, is a, bowl is the winner there. Uh, moral victories, but you don't get anything for moral victories in T20. You just generally get a, a four or a six. Very clear they, they're going to try and start targeting. Uh, these last few overs here to try and get that score up to that 150. I'm sure 150 is in their in their mind. Yeah, Vakas Barkat would have walked out with some clear instructions for himself and what to relay to Ezaz Khan. Another full toss from uh, Van der Merwe. Doesn't cost him much. It's 98 for 5. Fifteen overs of the opening game of the 2018 Hong Kong T20 Blitz. Done and dusted here. Telecast going round the world. Neo Sports across the subcontinent. India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. I cable sport here in Hong Kong. Fox Sports in Australia. BD Sport in the UK. Star Times Africa. In the Caribbean at CSPN. And OSN in the Middle East. Truly global event it's wonderful to see uh, not just for this event but for cricket hong kong in general to see their cricketers seen around the world because they certainly have made a name for themselves in that associate world yeah we're making our na a name for ourselves in this in this associate world on on the field and uh, also we're trying to lead the way off it as well with the sixes with the t20 blitz here um, trying to make hong kong a bit of a destination to come to uh, come and watch cricket here in this amazing city We've got Johan Bota back finish off his his four overs uh, the experiment of Carl Christie's not worked went for 20 off the la 20 odd off the last over so he's come back just to try and rein in a little bit um, and I'm pretty confident that uh, Tanvir Ahmed will be into the attack pretty pretty quickly just over just over and that's going to be maximum again once again all you need a, is a bit of timing and it was over the head of ben lachlan at long on again a short arm jab yeah i'm not sure he got all of this i think we'll see on the replay it's quite high up on the bat um and he's he's not got not got all of it uh fielder actually quite far in uh which is a surprise they call for two as ours calls for two i think you should be able to get that i think that was probably a missed opportunity there um, a bit of fielding but uh, I think it's probably a bit of a missed opportunity to get to get the Zars back on strike he's really ticking 49 from 32 that would have taken him to 50 
I reckon on that occasion, Vakas Barkat had one eye on who the fielder was. And Roloff van der Merwe, live wire in the outfield. Yeah, he's a good fielder, but these two, they, they called two pretty early on. Uh, they also called no pretty early on. Uh, this stage of the game, I think you probably needed to push that a little bit. And uh, Zaj just squeezes it out. Looks for two again, but that takes him to 50 off 33 balls. That's his first 50 in uh, T20 Blitz history. Very, very good innings. Great strike rate, 150. Good rotation as well. Uh, he'd be very happy with his ones and twos as well as his boundary striking. The end of 16, 108 for five. Key now for uh, for City Kaitak is that Azar stays there as deep into this innings as possible. Uh, Wakas can really start to go hard now. He's he's fairly sad. He's been in for 11 balls. He's got 13 runs. He's got one one boundary away already. And uh, I think it's uh, it's very important that uh, one of these two is is definitely there at the end. I think Azar's probably needs to be that that person. Yeah, he's got the jumper off now. So I reckon he doesn't mind the thought of a quick uh, bash towards the end. That's the captain of City Gaitak, Rayad Emrit. There's a CHK staff so they're sitting there reading, reading a book. Oh, Van der Merwe is uh, back in into the attack to finish off his set of four. Full ball out to mid off. We'll look to see uh, Wackass targeting this this straight boundary and, and over extra cover if he if he can get it there. Yeah, I reckon with four overs to go, he's got to a 50, played brilliantly. He'll want to stay till the end though. Won't want to throw his wicket away, no matter how well he's played. Could see his subdued celebration almost. Yeah, and that's a good thing that he's you know, he's not happy with 50. Um, I think there was a, a time a few years ago where you got 50 and he was very, very, be very, very happy and kind of job done. But uh, job's not done. Still uh, a long way to go in this innings to get them up to a, a respectable score. They've got to try and get another 40 runs, in my, my opinion, to make it competitive. Scuff uh, off the splice of the bat and it's just gone for four. The Zakat gave up on that one halfway and then realised it wasn't he could actually get there. That was uh, Roloff van der Merwe, pulls a rank bad full toss and then says catch. That should have been put away out of the ground. You see, look, he's given up on the ball, he's given up on the ball and then going. That's um, interesting fielding, let's put it that way. This time, just out of reach of Nizakat Khan. Again, you heard screams of catch it from Roloff van der Merwe. Back to back boundaries. Back to back boundaries, almost similar shot, similar contact points on the bat, very high up on that splice. Um, but it just highlights how small the boundaries are here. You can still get it quite a decent distance away from fielders. <laughs> The end of 17, a loose end to the over, over from Van der Merwe, 119 for 5. Three full tosses to finish his spell. He'll be a bit upset with himself for that one. Yeah, he will be as we see uh, Azaz Khan's. Azaz Khan's 50. Uh, some really, really good shots. Powerful shots, mainly in front of the wicket. That was probably the highlight for me, a really good check drive. And a very mature innings from, from Azaz Khan, who's really starting to move forwards in his in his career as an international cricketer. Yeah, there's just a reminder of his scoring areas, three fours and three sixes. You're going to see a few of the big ones here. Relatively short boundaries. There are longer boundaries as well. You've got uh, the 60 metres. You've also got maybe even 80 metres almost. 
towards the longest part of the ground where we saw Kyle Kutzer dismissed by Kyle Christie. Ben Lachlan back into the attack to finish off this innings. One for 12 currently. Um, he's been uh, he's been outstanding so far. Lots of variety. Um, his change-up ball is significantly quicker than anything else. Very, very difficult for a batter to set. There we see that change-up ball. A lot quicker. Went straight through as ours before he could really get his get his bat down. But great effort from young Ezaz Khan, sent up to do a job, certainly did it, gave the inning some momentum, but he goes for 52. City Kaitak, 119 for six. You see Ryan Emirate coming into bat now. Made for in this situation as we see Ezaz just maybe going across the line a little bit, if you'd maybe Kept his check drive like we saw before. He might have got a different result. Just a little bunt over the, over the straight boundary, but uh, take nothing away from him. Great innings. Got City Kaitak out of trouble, uh, giving them an opportunity to get a, a reasonable score on the board. But yeah, the Magenta fans are a happy lot for the moment in Hong Kong. Yeah, I think if. Uh, You'd rather be a Jaguar than a, than a Kai Tak, City Kai Tak player at the moment, as we see Robin Singh there, uh, just to the left of your screen. So he'll Tanvir, who came in, came and went pretty quickly earlier on in the innings. Captain of the City Kai Tak franchise out there in the middle, Riyad Emrit. That's prodigious movement from Ben Lachlan. We saw it at the very first over he bowled. Very similar delivery to the one he got Ravi Bopara with. Inside edge onto the stumps. Another look at Ezaz Khan's demise. Good innings, but he knew he could have just finished it off. Given the fact that he was seeing the ball well. Yeah, just, just a great highlight there. Of, of, how difficult Ben Lockham is, is to pick up uh, the quick full ball which bowled Azaz Khan. His first ball to Brad Emirat was a slow, swinging, floaty ball. Uh, and then his next follow-up ball was a quicker ball, back of a length, cramped him for room. Very, very difficult to get going. And when you have to come in with only sort of 18 balls to go, really difficult to get set. Again, Wakas's Wakas Barkat here is being a bit sensible. Fairly low back lift, just trying to get bat on ball trying to understand what Ben Lachlan is trying to do maybe just trying to get out of his over and then they'll try and target whoever bowls at the other end yep a few big overs they would have wanted a few more just an almighty swing at that one 122 for 6 after 18 yeah, I reckon um City Kaitak would have wanted a few more big overs in that one. I know we used to call it a Manhattan at one point in time, but I think it's time for the terminology to change. Let's start calling it a Hong Kong. Yeah, it could be called a Hong Kong, couldn't it? But it does, re does represent the, uh, the the Hong Kong Island landscape from uh, when you look at it from, from Kowloon side, uh, definitely. As you can see there with the, uh, with the Hong Kong, um, the real building phase started around the 14th, 13th over and continued through and then they've just lost a wicket which has stalled that run rate a little bit, um, which may potentially prove a little bit a little bit costly. Yeah, just a few overs in, in double digits. The power play, it was set back by the loss of uh, early wickets. Carl Christie back into the attack from the softball end. Um, for want of a better word, I'm not sure what we're calling that end, uh, but that's uh, he's changed round, swung round, uh, started off with a with a slower ball, They're putting a lot of faith in him. They got Tanvir Ahmed, who hasn't come into the attack yet. Uh, I can see it, see him out here. He's talking to uh, Nazakit Khan. Whether they're going to bring him in on at this at the other end, I'm not sure. But 
Carl Christie started well. Two dots. And he'll look to finish out his overs uh, with as little damage as he can do, uh, as he can concede as possible here. I reckon the plan from Kinchit Shah at the moment is just to keep to his five bowlers unless someone had been taken for a few runs. Kyle Christie, relatively inexperienced, as you said, coming back with a bit of uh, repair work done to him. Excellent ball there. Nice and full. Great Yorker. It's interesting, isn't it, when you when you look so so Tan Tanvir is an out and out bowler. He's he's not a batter, he's a, he's not a bad fielder. He would bat eleven. Um, kind of think about their team lineup and you the, the players that they've missed out, they've left out. Uh, Jaguars leave out Scott McKechnie, for example, um, who's a very, very good batter, so they're potentially of, of playing an extra batter while still retaining those same five bowlers. Um, Interesting, uh, interesting the way they where they went about it with their their final eleven. Um. I guess that's the way this uh, format of the game goes. Uh, for City Kaitak, you've got someone like Rad Kapoor, a middle order batsman, sitting still waiting for a bat at number nine. But you've had the big hitters coming in to try and push things on. Yeah, it's very very fluid as we see uh, the first ramp. Uh, outstanding uh, shot again shows Wakas thinking thinking very correctly thinking well fine leg is, is up Kyle's bowling nice and full uh, and he's then executed a great ramp shot good technique nice eyes eyes nice and still watch the ball right onto the bat not an easy shot to play but it's it's, it's become commonplace now just as common as a as an extra cover drive or a or even a forward defensive shot. Yeah, has, has something like even the reverse sweep. It's it's not even looked at as as something you that's out of place for someone like uh, Owen Morgan. Even very much part of his armory. Yeah, that's right. And some players are actually more comfortable playing that than they are playing a, a cover drive or a straight drive. Uh, certainly, from a bowler's point of view, it's a nightmare if. if players are hitting hitting you over your head back over your head and, and over your keeper's head it's an it's a nightmare you don't know where to go great follow-up off stump yorker not a lot wakas could do about that as uh carl christie finishes off really really well scores 128 for 6 19. Yeah, still a specialist batsman to come in the form of Raj Kapoor. Well, uh, Samuel Badri will have a role to play with ball in hand. Given the conditions we've seen so far, he'll certainly enjoy uh, bowling on this. Perhaps even see him open the bowling like we saw Johan Boiter. No over to go. I want to try and get up to that 140 mark. Yes, and it's uh, going to be bowled by Ben Lachlan, who uh, has been... One of the outstanding bowlers so far for the Jaguars as we see another great slow ball. Completely deceived Wakas Bark out there. Him just getting bad on ball here. Have to try and try and survive. Yeah, 140 is only a theoretical target if Lachlan bowled like that. Yeah, he could play a ramp shot or something like that to someone like Kyle Christie where the pace is more predictable. But when Lachlan bowls that bouncer, you never know when it's reaching you. You don't know whether it's a slow ball bouncer or a full bouncer. Because he's slightly quicker, Wakas has to move slightly earlier, which gives the bowler a little bit more indication of what's going to happen. Again, brilliant execution of a, of a Yorker there. You can only poke it out to, to mid on. See what Brian Emmerich can do, whether he can launch a couple of balls out, out of the ground uh, to try to get up to a kind of 135-138 score. That could easily have gone to hand. An outside edge from the skipper, Riyad Emmerich. Kinchit Shah mentioned at the toss, deciding to bowl first. Referred to the shorter boundaries, which obviously makes uh, chasing something you'd prefer as an option. And with the fresh pitch, 
get your first look at it with your bowlers. Yeah, it's one of those um, one of those one of those pitches where you turn you turn up and you're not quite sure. Uh, you've got a rough idea, but uh, both teams wanted to bowl first. I think that was definitely the right decision. Uh, I think it will be better actually to bat second. Um, but we can never tell until both teams have had a bat on it. They labour through for one. They look like uh, uh, not going to bother with the second run. That's where they're going to finish the City Kaitak, the opening innings of the Hong Kong T20 Blitz for 2018. Sees the runners-up of 2017 put into bat by Kinshit Shah and the Hong Kong JD Jaguars, finishing at 132 for six. All of it really possible only because of a change in the batting order. Young Ezaz Khan sent up into the middle order. Excellent half century from him, but yeah, the smiling men in magenta from the Hung Hom JD Jaguars will certainly feel they're in with more than a shot of registering a victory on the opening day. Early wickets really set them back. The key of their batting, and Shirat Kalkutsa, Jamie Atkinson, and Ravi Bopara, once they were back, Ezaz Khan had to play two different roles, initially sent up maybe just to uh, push the scoring along, then had to slow down and pick up his scoring rate later, but what a wonderful effort from him. Yeah, his, they, uh, him in combination with Wakas Barkat have done uh, outstandingly well to get uh, City Kaitak to, to 132 score, which is, I would say, quite below par. Outstanding performance by the JD Jaguars on what was been quite a quite a good wicket. Uh, I think for me, dominated by Ben Lachlan and Adim Ahmed, who've got almost identical figures. Uh, two for 19 off their four overs. Supported well by Johan Bota, both at the top of the innings and through the middle. Uh, and Carl Christie bowled a, an outstanding penultimate over um, to really kind of get his figures back on target. And uh, it's ultimately uh, enabled the JD Jaguars to uh, restrict City Kaitak to 132, which is uh, a very gettable score. Yes, when we come back, we're going to see the first run chase of this year's tournament. It's the Hong Kong JD Jaguars who need 133 to win the opening game.
Ben Laughlin really bowled his heart out, came up with his slower deliveries, bit of movement, wonderful length and line to finish. Certainly he was the hero, uh, Ben Laughlin with the ball, City Kaitak put into bat by Kinshit Shah. Laughlin and Nadeem Ahmed, the pick of the bowlers, three wickets between them for 38 runs in their eight overs. Finishing with 132 for six, something they'd uh, feel is about at least 25 or 30 runs under par. It all started with Johan Bota in the very first over. Yeah, clever bit of bowling, took a bit of pace off. Just a little bit of maybe moisture in the pitch has allowed that bit of grip. Uh, and then the very next over, Carl Kutzer, who was uh, outstanding in this tournament last year, just tried to take on the biggest boundary here in the the city at the uh, Tinkwong Recreation Grove ground and got caught. Ben Lockham with all these variations, a little slower ball, ended up dragging Ravi Bafar out and uh, all he ended up doing was, was chopping the ball on. And then Nadeem Ahmed in the middle of a really, really good spell. Good tussle with uh, Jamie Atkinson. Uh, just resulted in uh, the, the pressure build-up. Inside edge. Safe catch taken down there by Nazaki Khan. After an unsuccessful appeal, Johan Bota then traps Sohil Tambea LBW. The two. Which was a big blow for Sidi Kaitak at that point because they really needed him to ex explode that innings to get him up to the 150 score. Azaz Khan, who batted really, really well for 50, ending up perishing to another Ben Lachlan variation. Quicker ball this time, and his stumps end up all over the place. Yeah, as we said, really the story of the two bowlers, Ben Lachlan, with all the variations, the slower deliveries, that one quicker one to get rid of Azaz Khan, and Nadeem Ahmed bringing all his experience. 21 dot deliveries between them, apart from, of course, the wickets, and that really set back City Kaitak, and that's why they finished up with a 132 instead of a 152 type total, which is more where they could have been. There's the man. Azaz Khan batted really well, scheduled to come down perhaps at seven or eight, pushed up the order. Right, we see some of his, uh, some of his innings here, and uh, you see the, the clean striking that Azaz has, particularly with the short balls. He's very, very strong in front of the wicket. That, for me, was, a, was his best shot. His straight drive down the ground for six runs. Uh, the other thing to note here is his, his strike rotation. His ability to get off strike was very, very good in his early innings, which allowed him to buy himself some time to get set to then really start to, to launch. Uh, yeah, kind of doesn't tell you the full story there. A lot of ones and twos early in his innings. Was batting with Jamie Atkinson. And once he realized that the top order was gone, he knew he had to shoulder responsibility. He had Vakas Barkat at the other end, the man born in Rawalpindi. And they kept each other good company. Some good calling, some good running, and at the end, some big blows. That's right. And you see him warming up to bowl there. And he's uh, he's going to be very, very important with the ball when uh, when they do take the field. They've got... Uh, they've the City Kai Tak team have really got their work cut out here. Majinder Singh there, you see in, his, in the screen, didn't make, didn't bat. He's a very, very strong hitter of the ball, but he's going to be one that they're going to look to to try and uh, take some early wickets here and, and really put the JD Jaguars behind uh, behind the eight ball. Now, this is only day one, but there's plenty of action to come in the next few days. Tomorrow, we've got a double header. 10 o'clock local time in the morning. The City Kai Tak are up again. No rest for the wicket taking on Hong Kong Island United on the opening game. And then we have the defending champions in the afternoon. The Kowloon Cantons taking on the Galaxy Gladiators from Lantau Island. That's going to be a feast of cricket tomorrow from the Tinkwong Road Recreation Ground here in Hong Kong. Meanwhile, it's going to be Kinchit Shah with the pads on with what should be a very gettable run chase for the Hong Hong JD Jaguars. All that coming up on the other side.
Welcome back to the Tinklong Road Recreation Ground in the heart of Hong Kong. It's the opening day of the Hong Kong T20 Blitz for 2018. And the opening game between City Kaitak and the Hong Kong JD Jaguars. Jaguars winning the toss, asking the men in yellow to bat first. We reckon they've fallen a few runs short of what they would have liked at the start of the innings. The cream of their batting was undone in the first few overs. Never quite recovered, except for a wonderful half-century from Ezaz Khan, taking them to a respectable 132. That's the captain, Rayad Emrit. He's got a different hairstyle every tournament he gets to. This is his Hong Kong special. I think he's going to need uh, something special in this innings to... Uh to pull off a victory here, but um, man, you picture there, Sohil Tanvir, every, every chance of him pulling something out here. Very unusual action, very difficult to pick up, not only because his left arm it almost bowls off the wrong foot, uh, can get some prodigi prodigious swing, um, which uh, often undoes a lot of opening, opening batters. Kinchit Shah, who's captain of the JD Jaguars, he's taking strike first ball. And uh, I think he'll be quite happy at the moment with the score that he's trying to chase down. Jamie Atkinson standing well back for Sohel Tanvir. And look at that. Look at that movement back to the left-hander. And, of course, uh, just a bit of a stare to remind Kinshut Shah that he's the boss. That's right. And we see that length 
that we spoke about. We saw early on with Carl Christie bowled a couple of balls uh, to Ravi Bapara that moved off the seam with this new ball. And it's the same here. Soil Tanvir stands the seam up, bowls a really good line and length and that allows uh, unusual action, but it uh, allows the seam to uh, grip into that surface, that grass that's on the surface and a uh, bit of movement. City Kaitak have a slip, which is what they need. Take some wickets, put some pressure on the Jaguars. Very bright start from Sohel Tanvir. The one thing that can happen with his quick arm action is occasionally he loses control. And he might have the first ball of an innings go down for five wides. And that's not the kind of start you want when you've got 132 on the board. And I think he's been spot on here so far. Yeah, definitely. I think he's, he's one of those bowlers that um, he probably won't bowl quite so well if he hasn't bowled for a while. But if he's continually bowling and bowling and bowling, he's in rhythm and it's coming out nicely, he's got control, then uh, he can be a real, real handful. And like we just saw in that in that great shot there, it's, it's quite difficult for the batsman to, to pick up those visual cues as to where the line, the length, how it's swinging. Again, as we see Kinshit trying to trying to really take the attack back to Sohil Tanveer, try and take him over, over long on. Kinshit is one of those players, he likes pace on the ball. He's, he's not so comfortable against the spin. Uh, so this would represent his his best opportunity to get the Jaguars off to a, off to a fly. Yeah, it doesn't say much, so Hiltonvir. It's, it's the look he gives. It's the look. It's a killer look. I can tell you that. Doesn't like to say much. Sometimes that's better, isn't it? If there was ever a player who was um, ticked off for sledging without saying a word, it would be him. Yeah, a little bit of a glance and a stare. What do they say? Picture says a thousand words. A wonderful first over. It's been been a busy man. Um, Sohil Tanvir played for the Guyana franchise in the Caribbean Premier League. Came and played for Silet in the Bangladesh Premier League. And of course, had a very good outing in the Hong Kong Sixers. They fell short to a very new look South African side but it was an all pace bowler team that Pakistan sent over yeah I tell you what it was a, a pretty good side as well uh, they were Skinchits off off the mark with a guide down to uh, third man ends the first over one for none That's the surface uh, we're talking about. And Simon, you mentioned early in the morning about uh, the, the clay, which is uh, the reason why you have the ability to put this grass on it. It's not necessarily the kind of grass that will make the ball bounce and go all over the place. That's right. It's Thai, thai clay soil, um, and it's, uh, it reacts quite well here. You can put a lot of moisture into it. You, you can continue to roll it, and it actually gets better and better and better. What it does, it allows allows you to have a good covering of grass which continues to maintain pace and bounce uh, and, and means the pitch doesn't break up. Uh, we don't have a lot of grounds here in Hong Kong and so we play a lot of cricket on these on these wickets so they, they found a way of making sure that they stay intact for longer uh, to allow us to just continue to play as much as many games on turf as possible. I'm gonna open the bowling here with spin Samuel Badri coming into the attack Leg spinner from the West Indies, very experienced T20 cricketer now, very experienced new ball bowler, uh, good control of line and length, and uh, this will be a real challenge for Kinchit. We expected Badri to be opening up, and he's done exactly that. I think they've got their right combination out there. Sohil Tanvir from one end, Samuel Badri from the other. Interesting the ends that he's bowling. He's bowling the very short end. Um, to Kinchit, and which I think Kinchit will probably fancy having a bit of a crack at. Uh, that's the first boundary. That's not good from Badri. Down the leg side, all Kinchit tried to do is help the ball along its way, and was always going to be a boundary. Yeah, typical shot from, from Kinchit. He's worked actually quite hard on, on playing spin and his boundary options against spin. This is one of the options he's worked on. It's the square sweep and also the fine sweep. It goes in line with what he usually does, which is basically hitting through mid on, mid off, and uh, and mid wicket. Oh, he's going to get more runs here. 
It's a question if this has come off the bat or it's not touched anything. It's going to be wide. Tough start for Badri here. It's been put under pressure by Kinchit. Not sure Badri was quite impressed by that call. He reckons if it had to be uh, missing the bat, should have been four buys. Yeah, I'd, as a fellow bowler, I'd agree with that. Almost three in a row. But whether it's buys or wides, it's other than that one extra delivery, it still gives you four runs to the opposition. So he wants to keep the runs down. They're up and running after a brilliant first over from Sohel Tanvir. Yeah, Nazaki Khan comes on to strike. One of the most explosive uh, batsmen we have in in Hong Kong. He's got hundreds against the Sydney Thunder. Uh, he's got a hundred here in the in the competition last year in the opening game. Very very explosive cricketer. Just come off a hundred on uh, on the weekend where he got a hundred off sixty balls, I believe, in a in a club game. So he's in uh, he's in really really good form. I think the the Jaguars are looking. Looking for him to take this game away from City Kaitak as quickly as possible. They don't really want to take this deep. Nice. Sometimes there's a danger if you feel you're, you're winning the game too much. You can take your foot off the gas a little bit and suddenly you, you push yourself into a bit of a corner. That was not the worst shout in the world, you'd have to say. And that's that's pretty close. And Zakit getting his his pad across the line of the ball there may possibly be just of sliding down. Um, not much turn here. We haven't seen any balls turn yet. Yeah, maybe just sliding, but it's very very close. Jamie not moving from behind the stumps. That's normally a good indication of where the ball's going. Good finish to the over from Badri. Twelve after two. Mind you, uh, of the reason why they finished up with only 132, the six wickets they lost, starting at the very top. Johan Boiter getting the first wicket, then uh, Kyle Christie winning the Battle of the Kyles, getting Kutzer out, then Ben Laughlin into the Laughlin into the attack. Inside edge of uh, Ravi Bopara's bat, Jamie Atkinson next to go, down Nizakat Khan's throat, and back came Boiter with that leg before. Final wicket was that of Ezaz Khan. Zakit gets away with that, just threw, threw a shot a little bit early. Uses a very big bat and uh, leading edge nearly carried to uh, extra cover. How did that not uh, get to hand? Yeah, very good. lucky Ravi Bopara was maybe about five yards to his left, otherwise that would have been the simplest of catches. So, a bit of a charm life. We reckon the LBW shot in the previous over was... could have been dead and buried. It's uh, one of those uh, things, isn't it? When you're, in a, when you're in a run of form, suddenly things, things start going with you. You don't get given out. LBW, the balls just drop into gaps. One of the possible doubts in the umpire's mind could have been, could it have maybe pitched slight, sli slightly outside leg? The answer there, probably not. Uh, I think it's possibly thinking it's sliding down. That's all that you can see that that might be going wrong with that. But I think it's uh, be, it would have been an interesting one for DRS. I think uh, Nazakit might well have been on his way there if DRS was involved here. Quite a slow start for the uh, for the Jaguars. Uh, just a couple of couple of boundaries, one through through an extra uh, four, eight, five, five wides. They're just trying to scope out this pitch, trying to understand whether 130 is a good score or whether 130 is is a bit light. Uh, great start from Sohil Tamber. Exactly what. Riyad Emirate would have wanted some nice, some control where he can put a bit of pressure on in the middle innings. Oh, 
a wild swipe at that from uh, the captain of the Jaguars. But they've got the luxury. Hmm. Might, have a tight call. Might have been a bit harsh, that. That was an outstanding bit of bowling. Back of the hand, slow ball. Looks like he's pitched in, actually inside the, the wide line and then ended up spinning and going outside the wide line. That was a bit, a bit harsh. Yeah, that was well inside the line even when it passed it. So Hilton, we're not a man to react much to that. Just get on with his job. I might have got a stare there. Yeah, another great example of hitting the pitch nice and hard, a great length. Not giving Kinchard any any room to either get his hands underneath the ball or, or flay it wider to beat that third man. All he can do is just run it off down to third man. Well, I can tell you Sohil Tanvi didn't say much, but the skipper just had a quiet whisper in the umpire's ear. Are you serious, ump? Was that really wide? See him into the attack fairly soon. Skipper, Rayard Emrit. Yeah, I reckon having a look at him, he uh, usually matches his hairstyle to the colour of the franchise that uh, he's playing, the jersey colour. So he's got the nice blonde locks going here. Imagine if he was playing for the Jaguars. Yeah, wow. What, what, what's he going to... It would be quite interesting, the colour of magenta that he would have. Magenta Mohawk for Rayar Emrit. Canton's blue, maybe? playing for the Cantons but uh, yeah, played for City Kitak last year so uh, had a good understanding of what, of what the kit was going to be like so probably had plenty of time to prepare oh that could have gone to hand that came back really hard at uh, Sohel Tanvir that's almost three times Nezakat could have been back 15 for not He's really causing some problems here, so he'll Tanvir. And it's more to do with the length that he's bowling. It's, he's not letting batters get their hands through the ball. There's a little bit of movement with this new ball. Combined with a slightly unorthodox action and this combination of his slower balls. Really starting to cause the Jaguars some, some problems. However, 15 for none, they're, they're still undamaged starting the fourth over. So for all his dominance, for all his recent form, even the best have to start from scratch. New tournament, new day, new surface. Nizakut, well, he could have been out three times already. Absolutely. It's the biggest lesson that we have. A lot of our players are, are younger players. They're inexperienced players. And Cut! as you see, uh, Nizakut free his arms for the first time. Down he comes. This is exactly what he'll try and do. He's come down, target this short boundary. He's basically just hit that about 10 feet off the ground all the way over the boundary, around 45 meters. That was hit really hard, almost as if in response to us here because we keep reiterating we're so close to the action. He might have heard what we were saying. And he was, Are you talking about me? Out of form or out of touch? He's not got much of that either. He's got that right off the toe. Uh, he's riding his luck here. Like we said, you know, when, you, when you're in form, those things, you drop catches, don't get given out of LBW, the ball drops in a, in a gap. Yeah, there's uh, Justin Langer always talks about don't mess with form. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a real key message that when I played with Justin and he, he kept drumming that into all, all of the batters in particular. Uh, don't mess with form. If you're in form, make sure you cash in. That's going to go to the boundary. Kinchit Shah gets another one. The captain of the Hang On JD Jaguars. Might have had uh, his non-striker living a charmed life, but uh, he's been underway. Yeah, and Nazakit likes to give himself room outside leg stump. He's a definite candidate for slicing the ball, getting caught at short third man, backward point. 
You see Badri just come back with a, a tighter ball, tighter line to Kinchit. 27 without loss. So we've seen um, a few extras, but essentially I don't think City Kaitak will be too unhappy other than the fact that they would have hoped something's gone to hand. They've bowled well, but this is when the comfort, the cushion of maybe 20 more runs would have helped them. The Jaguars will know that uh, they're underway. Yeah, they've done well. Um, as you say, when, you, when you've got a slightly under par score, as the, uh, the senior players there have a chat to try and work out who's going who's gonna to bowl next, it's going to be Riyad Emirate. He's going to come on. Uh, as we've seen, Azaka Khan's six, followed up by uh, Kinchit's back cut for four runs. But uh, the City Kaitak won't be too disappointed with this in terms of their creating chances. They've created one or two genuine chances. They've had one, one LBW decision that's been turned down that could easily have gone their way. So they won't be too disappointed. The problem is when you've got an under par score is that you lose kind of the right to have a poor two or three overs or you know the luck going the wrong way you need everything to go right in these in these uh, low run scores run scoring in low totals that you've got to defend so Riyad starts off with a, a very wide leg side ball and again same things with these low scores you can't afford to give away those extras they're just balls that you don't want to have to re-bowl it's not only the runs that get, that get conceded off of the extra it's the actual ball that you've got to bowl again. It's quite often is the one that hurts you. It goes for four or six. That's what he's done in the past in uh, Hong Kong T20 Blitz. Rehard Emrit, skipper of the Kaitak this time. It's much more like it. And they also need a slice of luck going their way. Those four chances Nizak had offered. Any one of them, they've got a big man in the hut. Start eking out of the wickets. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to earn, earn your luck. Um, doing everything you possibly can right should allow you to earn the right, earn that luck. Balls will start dropping in the right areas. It's going to be four to the short boundary. Zaki getting across the stumps and just working it off his hip. Nice and fine, past short, fine leg. As the total just starts creeping up. The momentum starts moving towards the Jaguars. Interesting bit of fielding there. Yeah, that's the coach and Simon Cook coming out. He would, if, you, if you had been his, his fielding coach or his regular coach, you would have been... I'm not sure I'd have been too happy with that, to be honest. Been even less happy if I was the bowler. Let's see another extra here. Got away with that one. Well, the City Kaitak are going to be a busy lot to start with. Got uh, starting with the game tomorrow morning, the early game at 10 o'clock. Then we've got double headers all the way till uh, the morning of the 11th. Sunday evening, Sunday afternoon is going to be the final between the top two sides. Once they've had a right bash at each other. Two teams in action on the opening day. City Kaitak and the Hong Kong JD Jaguars. We're going to get our first look at uh, Hong Kong Island tomorrow morning. Then the defending champions against the Gladiators in the afternoon. Plenty of cricket leading up to the weekend and to the big finale on the 11th. Tournament this year has been extended by a couple of days to um, even out the fixtures. It's a short ball there from Riyad Emirate right into the pitch. Kinchit not quite picking that up. Just having to fend it away. launching onto the front foot wasn't quite expecting a ball in that length uh, yeah the tournament's been extended by a couple of days this year 
last year they ended up there was one the one of the days there were three games in a day one was starting at eight in the morning uh, which as you can imagine everyone wanted to bowl first at eight in the morning that's a great that's shot over extra cover by Kinchit a good response to uh, the previous ball playing at captain's innings here the end of five is 37 without loss Calling for a bit of uh, physio treatment or change of gloves. Got wrapped on the finger there from that penultimate ball by uh, Riyad Emirate. We see the Jaguars card. Kinchit going at a runner ball, top of the order in the Zakit. 13 from 14 balls. Just hit that one one boundary so far. Very much playing the, the second fiddle as we, uh, we're we going to see Ravi Bapara coming into uh, onto the bowl now. Yes, the oft underrated Ravi Bapara. Not sure um, how he's going to react to the surface as a bowler. Ben Lachlan, of course, really lapped it up, getting his movement, getting the change of pace. That's how uh, Kinchit Shah finished off the previous over from Riyad Emrit. Taking advantage of uh, the fielders still being inside the circle in the power play. Yeah, that's right. Once you can get it up and over extra cover, it's a it's a pretty safe shot. I think Ravi Bapara will look to operate with a, a little change of pace. Generally bowls around 80 miles an hour. Has a really good back of the hand slow ball. Starts off with a slower ball, which Zach just pokes out. Extra cover. He'll be communicating now with Kinchit about what he's bowling, how it comes out. See, it just comes out of the back of the hand and drops on the batsman. Ian Harvey uh, from Australia really pioneered this delivery about 10, 15 years ago. He was um, outstanding at it. That was a time when it was almost. Uh an endangered species people didn't really know much about it and, and suddenly it's become the in thing almost to the extent that you have the likes of Ben Laughlin who literally bowl it for a living that's right it's coming again and as we said in the in the first innings it's almost your, your, your normal standard pace delivery becomes your variation it's a it's a change up you're using your back of the hand slow ball front hand slow ball knuckle ball um, off cutter, leg cutter, and then your normal pace deliveries either their normal pace wide yorker, short ball. Just got to be trying to be smart with your fields. This is how he's going to operate. Lots of lots of changes of pace. Not going to let him get into it. And when he feels that Nazakat is lining him up, he'll probably slip that full quicker one in. Potentially, you'll you'll see an LBW or a bold. We saw that one quicker one from Lachlan, which uh, counted for uh, one of his wickets. Oh, that's going to be down the leg side, five wides. Wides into double figures already, and when you've got 132 on the board, that's not going to help by any means. No, that's probably going to be the thing that's going to hurt them the most at the moment but you see here this is exactly what he's trying to do he's, he's set him up for the slower balls and then he wants to have a real quick arm ball here at the stumps and he's just got it slightly wrong and he's ended up conceding five wides down the leg side back to the slower ball and you can get a guy get a get an idea what he's going to bowl the field that he's got he's got third man up he's got fine leg up it's not, he doesn't want to give the batters any pace to, to manipulate down behind square on the offside. So he's just using that pace. If, we've just seen there, if, if the batters run it off or get an edge, it's not going to go for four, it might get two. Hopefully it just goes for one. The other side of the coin, Simon, is being able to bowl even the quicker delivery when you do have a good slower one with a disguise. And we've got uh, the Bangladeshi bowler, Mustafizur Rahman, nicknamed the Fizz. And what he does really well is his quicker delivery comes out with a slower ball action. And that's what he's he's perfected and that's why he's such a mystery. And the uh, mystery is exactly 
what people are looking for now. As we see Ravi Bapara closing out his over with another slower ball. We move into the, the six overs done, 47 for none. Well, the Hung Hong JD Jaguars could not have asked for a better power play. That was the opening uh, shot from Kinchit Shah. Nizakrit Khan, well, he could have been out four times. One that nearly went to hand. That was another one. An LBW shout. But uh, Kinchit Shah at the other end has been very efficient. And to that package. Along with a few boundaries here and there, you can uh, add 13 extras. And that certainly helped the cause of the Jaguars looking very comfortable. With 14 overs of the innings still to go in this uh, run chase. Yeah, and the important thing here for JD Jaguars is the Ricky Vessels, Van der Merwe, Johan Bota, Darren Sammy, all still to come. And uh, City Kai Taka ringing the changes here. They've gone through their first couple of bowlers. Riyad Emirates had a go, Ravi Bapara's had a go. Changing now, Badri, I think, coming back on at the other end, at the uh, Toria end, I believe it's called. Oi. Yeah, you can see in both departments of the game, batting and bowling, the key overseas players for City Kaita haven't quite come to the party. We've seen their bowlers go for a few. But at least something they need to take away from this game is Ezaz Khan. Young Hong Kong player, really batting well. Vakas Barkat at the other end. And even if you end up on the losing side, those are things that you want to take away into your next game. Yeah, that's right. I'm surprised they haven't actually gone to him with the ball as well. Uh, because it, it does represent a, a really good option for them. As Kinchit... Oh, my word. Kinchit uh, goes for a big slog sweep, gets a top edge. And the ball inexplicably just drops in between Soil Tanvir and Rayad Emirate. The communication there between uh, West Indies and Pakistan not really working that well. Yeah, I think it was Sohel Tanvir's catch because he was coming forward and then he suddenly out of the corner of his eye saw the uh, blonde locks of his captain and said, maybe it's his. Not sure what happened there, but uh, definitely a breakdown in communication. <laughs> Just get the feeling everything's going against the City Kai Tak boys at the moment. Yes, <laughs> hey, you mentioned as uh, coming into the attack as they put on 50. Kinchit uh, Shah and Nizakat Khan batted well together. They've uh, ridden their luck, which is fine. almost certainly pitched outside leg yeah here we see four pitching yeah. outside leg stump with a googly from Badri same ball again this time read by uh, Kinchit JD Jaguar sitting nice and pretty seventh over seven overs gone 50 for none chat between the two batsmen you could see the skipper indicating to Nizakat that uh, there was a couple of wrong ones that uh, Badri threw in to finish the previous over no real problems in this run chase yet plenty of batting to come Ricky Vessels in due next roll off Funda Merva after that in case you need any acceleration Darren Sammy plenty of power to come Plenty of power to come for the JD Jaguars. Um, you see a partnership there up front. 50 off 42 balls. Kinchit 19 off 21 and Nazakit 18 off 21 going nice and strong. And you see use of the hands from Nazakit just to push the ball out to deep square. Get the feeling that they're, they're very much in control here. Um, they're not going too hard. Very, very controlled. They feel like they've, they've got the, the game 
really within their their power to to win and they're probably going to look to knock it off in the sort of 15th over one or two down maximum haven't really needed to do much apart from these two batsmen out there we've got uh, extras sitting pretty on 13 12 wides already inside the eighth over That's right, and it's really nice to see two two Hong Kong batsmen out there not panicking, playing nicely, playing within control, thinking about what they need to do, thinking about who they're targeting, thinking about who's bowling at them, how they're bowling. It's quite easy, you know, would, would have probably seen two or three years ago, probably both of these two batters trying to go really hard at, at someone like Ravi Bapara and ending up throwing their wickets away. Quite happy, quite content to, to knock it around. Take the odd boundary here and there, which is going to be easily enough to get them over the line. Playing the situation really well, the Jaguars. Might have been very different had they been batting first. You would have seen a very different side to these two. Just playing on the merit of the score they're chasing. Yeah, that's right. The the one thing they have to be careful of here is they don't back themselves into a, into a corner. They can't go too defensive. They still need to take the boundary opportunities that that are there when they present themselves. Uh, otherwise, they could end up backing the lower order into into a bit of a corner. Spotted that one. And took a while reaching him. What are the options now for Real Emirate? Who does he turn to? Who's going to be his golden arm? Will it be the man with the half century, Ezaz Khan? Yeah, I think they've. I think they've got to go to to Azaz at some point. Uh, Wakas Barkat also bowls some really useful leg spin. He's he's also a, a wicket taker. Uh, he can create opportunities. So we've seen Azaka turning the ball off his legs. And in your picture there, Azar's just fielding the ball. I do feel he probably needs to be throwing the ball at, at some point. Anchiman Rath also bowls some, some very useful left arm spin as we uh, complete the eighth over at 56 for eight. Going well. Um Hong Hong JD Jaguars chasing 133. Still the openers unseparated at the start of the ninth over. Another big conference between the uh, senior statesman of the city Kaitak. That's the captain. We could see a bowling change from the men in yellow. It's been all magenta so far here at the Ting Kuang Road a Recreation Ground in Hong Kong. Day one of the 2018 T20 Hong Kong Blitz. And here we go. We have uh, indeed got the, the change as Ars Khan coming on to, uh, coming on to bowl. His traditional warm-up likes to uh, mark his run-up out and then have a little... little trundle in I think he's probably got quite a late call up there um, doesn't looks quite stiff cold breeze here means he'll probably be stiff as a plank down at uh, fine leg take a few balls to get warmed up yeah just starting to get a little bit cooler again compared to a couple of days ago it was uh, relatively milder in the middle of the afternoon but you can see the breeze just picking up just past four o'clock in the afternoon local time in hong kong start from azaz just 
pushed out to a deep point from uh, from Kinchit. City Kaitak need to get some wickets here if they're going to start stalling the, the Jaguars innings. Just looks a bit easy for them at the moment. I think they need to try and create something, something from nowhere. Um, otherwise, the game is just going to drift away from them a little bit. Like to see them you know, get a get a slip in or bowl a few bounces. Use this big side on one side and run in and just see if they can create something from nothing. Oh, he's crunched that as Nizakat Khan. I'm so lucky the fielder at the extra cover didn't get a finger to it. That's the kind of shot we're used to seeing from Nizakat Khan. Yeah, exactly. Gives himself room outside of, outside the leg stump. Uses his hands. He's got terrific hand speed through the ball, which means he can generate some significant power from pretty much little or no base. And once he gets going, he can be very dangerous. Pitching it short and just reminding Kinchit Shah, Nizakit Khan is back. Yeah, that's right. I don't mind the short ball to, to Nizakit, but I think you've probably got to use it from this the commentary box end where, where the, the boundary is sort of 60, 70 meters, um, whereas that side it's about 45. Plus, you've got to get the ball right up, right up above the, uh, above the, the chest line. Zach, it is one of the uh, leading run scorers in this competition. Another boundary, that's three in a row. And this one's gone all the way. That is an indication sometimes of the short boundaries. It's just almost a, a jab, a slash, which typically would have gone over slips for, for a single to a third man fielder. But that's gone for all the way. Yeah, that's right. And that's. If you're going to take a, if there's a takeaway from from cricket in Hong Kong, it's exactly that. It's a thick outside edge that would normally go for one run, generally goes for six. Uh, so you do see some extraordinary scores here in domestic cricket. Sovers rapidly beginning to. Uh, Put the final nails in the coffin of the uh, City Kai Tak team. Run rates becoming lower and lower and lower. Very, very good catch there by Ra Kapoor. Again, what we were talking about before, using the short ball to the big boundary, you're trying to create something from nothing. If the guy's going to hit you out the ground, get him to hit you out the ground over the over a fielder's head. And, um, smart bit of cricket from uh, Azaz Khan and uh, Kinchit Shard departs. The captain goes for 22. It's 72 for one. I think it's a very key wicket before it does overlook like it was getting away from them. A big, big over. 16 runs off it, the last ball of the over. Just testing him out and he had the luxury of that big boundary. We saw a very similar position to where uh, Kyle Kutsa was caught earlier by Nadeem Ahmed. But a wonderful catch there taken by Raag Kapoor on the boundary. Judged it well. Brought Ricky Vessels to the crease. Another dynamic batsman, Ricky Vessels, plays for Knotts in uh, in England. Trent Bridge used to playing on very flat wickets. There's some short boundaries there. There's been some huge scores in, in 2020 cricket um, domestically that Knotts have been involved in. And uh, Ricky, along with uh, Hales, Samit Patel, have been instrumental in those uh, in those big scores. As we see a uh, a normal delivery from Ravi Bapara first up with a little bit of seam movement. As we just see a replay here of a short ball from uh, Azaz Khan hitting 
getting Kinchit high up on the bat and a great catch from Raj Kapoor out at deep square. They really need to find a way back into this game. They've got that one wicket and they can't afford to let Nizakat Khan get going. No, that's right. And I think if if I was on the City Kaitak team, I'd be looking to try and bowl a lot more shorter balls, particularly from Ravi Papara's end, trying to hit out to this uh, this deep boundary. So I think all, all Nazakat's going to do here is just going to keep swinging and his bat speed and the way, way he plays, actually that deep point, deep third man, deep extra cover, they're, they're all in the game and that's, that's his scoring areas. You've got to try and get him to hit where he doesn't want to hit. Oh, at the start of Nazakat's innings. Could have been out LBW, could have been ha taken by uh, Sohail Tanvir, a return catch. One nearly went to hand, just uh, behind point. But I think once he's found the middle of the bat, he's finding the gaps in the field as well. When you see a short boundary, you don't always have to hit it too hard. Just get the right amount of placement. No, he wants a souvenir. Can we have it back? Thank you, sir. Yeah, it wasn't high enough, really, if, uh, to trouble Nazakit. Um, he is such a dangerous player if he gets going. He really can just take a game away from you. He's proved that in the past, time and time again. He's looking to go one better than uh, Azaz Khan. I think he's looking for a, a, a 50, 79 for one off 10. Simon mentioned a moment ago, but uh, look at Nizakat Khan there on top of the tree. 282 runs on home JD Jaguars. Dwayne Smith is playing in this tournament as well. Kyle Kutza missed out today for City Kaitek, otherwise, he could have been challenging Nizakat Khan. Some other big names in there as well. Yeah, Mizban not, not here this year. Um, down there, Baba Hyatt for the Kowloon Cantons. He'll be in action tomorrow. I think he's looking to uh, to try and challenge that top spot in this in this tournament. Badri starts his, his fourth over, putting uh, all their eggs in one basket here, trying to trying to create something in this middle or in this middle order. Get another wicket. Yeah, I think they've realised they've. Uh not got too many runs to play with so they've gone to Badri he's already in his fourth over they've gone to Sohel Tanvir rare emirate no doubt Tanvir will come back soon if you can see them getting close to the target but no sign of Manjinder Singh yet no sign of Akash Barkat who could bowl his leggies yeah um, they're just trying to all, like I say put all their eggs in one basket I wouldn't be surprised if Sohel Tanvir comes back um, pretty soon just to try and make a breakthrough there's not going to be an end to this innings, uh, so you're not going to need him at the end. The only way they're going to win this game is by is by bowling the Jaguars out. Indication there of uh, the way Ricky Vessel started is maybe it's not all that easy for a new coming incoming batsman. We saw Nizak could struggle early in his innings. Once you're in, just get a feel of the way the ball's coming off. Expected to get a little bit uh, quicker, a little bit more batting friendly as the sun continues to beat down over the week. Gets a little more tolerant in terms of the temperatures. That's been it high. And what a catch! That came out of nowhere. And we had no reaction whatsoever from Sohail Tanvir. It was just like he was plucking plums. Yeah, it looked like he, he got a decent part of that um, as he departs for three. 
six. As we uh, 83 for two off 11. Three for two in 11 overs. The men in yellow have come together, trying to find a way back into this match. Johan Boitov, just like he bowls up and down the order, he bats up and down the order as well. You never know when he's walking out to bat. We were expecting maybe uh, Roloff uh, von der Merwe to be out at number four. But uh, I think Boitov just bullied his way in. I'm going in now. Finally, the yellow flags are flying. A few smiles for the City Kydex supporters. They've got a wicket at a key time. Ricky Vessels didn't look comfortable out there. You've got to get them early. So leave Nizakat at one end. Try and get wickets at the other. Yeah, I think you're, just, you're actually starting to see guys who are in and, and playing a lot of cricket and, and guys who, who aren't actually playing a lot of cricket. You know, this looked like you got a decent part of it, um, but not quite enough and a very comfortable catch there by Sohil Tambea and uh, as you say pretty minimal reaction there from uh, from Sohil it's a big blow for um, for City Kai Tak and Riyad Emirates gonna look to try and repeat that by getting out uh, Nazakit Khan who's looking starting to look very very dangerous with uh, as he approaches his 50 off just 35 balls Uh, the best first over from the captain of City Kaitak. And with Badri having finished out, I reckon we might just see Sohil Tanvir come back in. As Simon mentioned a moment ago, this is not going to go till the 20th over. Got to try and cause the damage right here if you want to stand a chance in this match. Yeah, that's right. You're getting Nazakat out now. Two new men in. You've got a, an opportunity of a couple of dot balls, bit of pressure, get another wicket, then suddenly you can start creating some artificial pressure when, you know, realistically we see 48 runs from 52 balls. There realistically isn't that much pressure. However, you know, six runs and over, in theory, is very easy now nowadays, but it actually never is when you get into the heat of the moment. Zakat Khan just allowing uh, Johan Boita to ease into his innings. A couple of singles. Doesn't need to really uh, do anything different. Just be there till the end, Zakat Khan. Strike rate much more like uh, the kind we're used to seeing from him. Going to be good for, for Nazakat to have quite a calm head in Johan Boder out there. He'll talk him through exactly what's going on. Johan will also want to be there. He's uh, slightly underused in last year's tournament, used more as a more as a bowler, uh, but he's un undoubtedly a very very effective batsman. I think he's had a word with Kinchit Shah. But you like characters like that in the dressing room. You like people who want to be involved. They want the ball to come to them in the field. He, he likes bowling his four overs at different times. We already mentioned that when he was bowling. And of course, with bat in hand, he's been so good for South Africa, lower down the order, showing it here. Versatile. Yeah, you exactly want characters like that who, who want to be involved, take, take the critical situations and own them. Uh, that's ultimately, I think, what, probably what he has done here. He's spoken to Kinship uh, and he said, "Look, get me into the middle order. Let's let's win this game properly." It's the thirteenth wide delivery. The extras now going up to fourteen. Yes, they've got three such characters in their dressing room. They've got Johan Boiter, Roloff van der Merwe, and of course, the irrepressible Darren Sammy. Wealth of experience, isn't it? Um, wealth of experience across that 
group of players uh, that Kinchit, who can, as the captain, uh, can tap into. I'm, I'm pleased that Kinchit has retained the captaincy. A lot of the other teams have, uh, have moved away from from Hong Kong players. Just happy with a the single there at the end of 12. It's uh, 89 for two. A lot of the teams have moved away from Hong Kong players captaining. Uh, Azaz Khan captained City Kai Tak last year. Uh, Riyad Emirates taken over this year. Uh, Kinshid has retained the captaincy of JD Jaguars, probably because his father is one of the owners. Um, Baba Hyatt, is, as the national captain, is captain in the Cantons, which is good. Yeah, lovely view. Uh of the hills just surrounding this uh, wonderful cricket facility. The Ting Kuang Road Recreation Ground in Hong Kong. Got some big names in this tournament. There's a glimpse of one of them right behind. Kumar Sangakara, Dwayne Smith, Darren Sammy already involved today on the opening day. And of course, the stars of Hong Kong cricket and one of the big stars, one of the imposing stars, Nizakat Khan, 48 of 37. And it's really good to see, no matter what happens in this tournament, you want the overseas players to add a bit of colour and spice. But so far, all the performers here have been the local boys. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're going to, what we're going to see. Last year, there was a couple of glimpses. Um, Nizakat got 100. Uh, Mohamed Owais, who played for Galaxy Gladiators, he got a he got a 50 in, in one of the games um, in, in a losing cause, unfortunately. Uh, Carl Christie had a couple of good spells, but it's really, really encouraging to see now that it's it's not just overseas players versus overseas players. It's we've got our, our national guys in here and actually really contributing. And uh, credit to the franchises, they've actually put them in positions where they can actually contribute, and they're uh, they're delivering. And one such position we saw with that man on your screen, Ezaz Khan, who was pushed up to batting order when his side were in trouble, got them out of trouble, got himself a wonderful half century and uh, took City Kaitak to a score, which was at least something to bowl at, if not necessarily a winning score. Oh, that's very close. That's going to be very close. He's gone. First ball from Manjinder Singh. We just were asking, where is he? He comes on and says, here I am with a wicket. First ball. Absolutely, full and straight. Zakit Khan not being able to get his pad out of the way and it's just crashed straight into uh, into his pad in front of middle stump. Big wicket, Zakit Khan goes short of his 50. He goes for 48. It's 89 for three. Manjinder Singh announces himself in style. Been so refreshing to see every single time someone's been thrown a ball among local players, they've stood up and been counted. He probably felt he got himself outside the line, but the impact was very much in line with the stumps. Um, very, very easy decision there for the umpire. Brings Ruloff van der Merwe into, into bat. Again, a very aggressive, combative middle order batsman. Likes to get off and running with a boundary generally early on in his, in, in his inning, so look out for that. What about that first ball from Manjinder Singh? Almost been forgotten by his captain. Comes on in the 13th over, gets the big fish. Nizakat Khan sent back. City Kaitak with a spring in their step now. Can he give us one of those swinging Yorkers yet again? To the new man. Not quite a Yorker, but certainly a very good delivery. It's an important tournament for Majinda Singh. He's been uh, into the national squad um, a few years ago. He went to the World Cup qualifiers in New Zealand, 2014. So we just see... Uh, all running back into Rulof van der Merwe. Inside edge and, and well fielded by Wakas Barkat, who's, who's definitely uh, saved three runs there. Um, yeah, Majindu was in, in the, the 
World Cup qualifier squad in 2014. Uh, it's kind of dropped out of our system um, just through uh, lack of opportunity in a, in, in a way. Has uh, continued to play domestic cricket. As you can see, it's four runs through back of point. Has continued to play domestic cricket and has, has, has done okay. Um, picked up here by City Kaitak in the in the draft. They see something in him. Um, he's one of those players that we hope these these sorts of tournaments become springboards to get back into into the national setup in, in front of people. Yeah, this Hong Kong T20 blitz going around the world, and certainly if you want to perform, perform under the spotlight, and he's done it. Wicket of his first ball. And he's been right on the spot. That's the kind of delivery that got rid of Nizakat Khan. He's generating a decent amount of pace as well. Yeah, good pace. Um, he's always generated decent, decent amount of pace. Just gets the ball to angle in. He, he reverses the old ball very well. And he's, uh, he's not the worst batsman either. He can hit some, uh, some very, very long balls. <laughs> And yet he was scheduled to come in at number 11. It just shows they have some depth in this side to the City Kaitak. Runners up from uh, 2017. They might come up second best today, but there'll still be plenty of positives to pick up because they've hit the ground running in this tournament. They're playing tomorrow morning again. Not much of a turnaround for them. Yeah, that's right. They're up tomorrow morning against uh, Hong Kong Island United. Oh, that's going to be fine enough for four. That just shows how short these this boundary is. And unfortunately, just penalised for for getting slightly too wide. Ninety-nine for three. Yeah, just out of shot there. That's uh, our commentary position. A very gentle dab for a four. No real threat to us here. That's just confirmation of uh, what City Kaitak have coming up tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock local time, on day two of the Hong Kong T20 Blitz. Should be a cracking contest. City Kaitak do go on to uh, lose this match, the opening encounter. They'll be coming back hard, and uh, that's what we have in store tomorrow afternoon. Two o'clock local time. It's going to be the Kowloon Cantons taking on the Galaxy Gladiators of Lantau. Riyad Emirate continuing. bit expensive she feels he's he's the man to make the breakthrough it's quite a good uh, attribute to have as captain if you feel that you know you're the man and you you step up um, we can see these uh, the, the two innings are really starting to track similarly together but uh, the Jaguars are just ahead at this stage That's what he's done a few times in this innings. Number 14. And if it's a lesson they're going to take for tomorrow morning, that's, I think, lesson number one. They've got to fix that very quickly because uh, it's because of that that they really haven't managed to keep that uh, worm as close to their own as they would have liked. Yeah, that's right. But you can also see there what, what wickets do. Um, you know, they've taken a couple of wickets and they've ended up trying to drag that run rate back to, to where they are. We talk about critical points within within games. And, you know, this this sort of the last couple of overs and, and probably the next two overs are, are really critical to see if they can actually try and create some artificial pressure to make the JD Jaguars make some make some errors and, and get them back in the game because as it as it goes at the moment they'll basically just uh, run out losers in this game 
fairly meekly. Rather almost lose this game in 17 overs having had a real good crack than, uh, than lose it in the 15th over. Having let the game just drift. Yeah, with 34 runs that were needed of 42 balls at the start of this over, I personally was a little surprised he didn't turn to Sohil Tanvir, who really bowled well at the start of the innings. Got nothing to lose, and he should have known that he himself hasn't had a great day, so fair enough. Yeah, if you've got 12 balls at Sohil Tanvir, you want to use him at the most critical times, and 100% and agree this is, uh, this is one of those times. Just got to try and take a, take a wicket. And again there, have a slip, you know, you, you're not going to defend the runs, have a slip. You need to bowl the Jaguars out. Spot on Simon, just may have missed a trick there, uh, Riyad Emrit. Coming in to uh, captain the city for Kaitak for the first time. Esas Khan, the original captain last year. Got away with that one. He was very fortunate. He had a fielder that was Manjinder Singh, who was fairly fine. Otherwise, you get great value for a little dab and a little flick. Yeah, and the fielders really need to be aware of their of their space around them and their angles in particular. Uh, with these short boundaries, particularly straight, uh, as you say, those those balls that would only really go for one normally potentially can go for four if you're. If you're uh, out of position by only one or two feet. It's a good finish to the over. 108 for three. It's been almost too easy for uh, the Jaguars. Johan Poeta and Rolof van der Merwe haven't really had much to do, just uh, build on the start given by the captain, Kinchit Shah. And, uh, fairly efficient innings from Nizakith Khan, not for the first time, the top run scorer in the history of the Blitz. Yeah, good to see the Jaguars being, scorecard being dominated by, uh, by a national player with, with Nizakith Khan. City Kaitak bowlers have, have struggled a little bit, uh, particularly with the extras, we've seen that. Um, so Hill Tanvir not, not really used as, as such, but he's coming back on to bowl right now. Samuel Badri bowled out, his white one for 29, he's tried tried quite hard, but uh, every bowl has really struggled, particularly with, uh, with the extras. Look at those figures for Sohil Tanvir, two overs for four. I reckon Riyad Emrit may have brought him back a couple of overs too late. There you see, evidence of why he's so impactful no matter what stage of the innings he bowls. Have a slip. Get a slip in. I agree. I think when, when Majinda got a, got Nazakit out, that, that was the time where uh, Sohil should have come back on. Uh, yes, he might have been ending up bowling it. And then he didn't want to bowl at, but uh, I think that was the time to get him on to really try and break open the, the Jaguars innings to give them the City Kaitak a chance of winning the game. I'd still like to see a slip in here. That's exactly what happens from the extra pace he generates. Yeah, just lose your mid-wicket. Um, lose your short mid-wicket, get a slip in. That's the short mid-wicket you're talking about. Yeah, just get, lose the short mid-wicket. So he'll generally takes the ball across the right-handed batter. Uh, he's, he's got some good movement so far. If he's hitting good lines and good lengths, there's every chance he'd be able to get a nick off. If the batter wants to work it against his angle through mid-wicket, then it's even more so he's going to bring slip into play. That's perfectly placed. That is impeccable placement from Roloff van der Merwe. 
Oh, he just used the uh, contours of this ground so well. He knew he's got a good bowler up against him and realized if I want a boundary, I need to thread the needle. That's right. 45 meter boundary down there. Uh, short, fine leg. It's, it's not a big boundary. You just have to get it past the inner, inner ring and you've got every chance of beating both fielders that are back. Good comeback. Yeah, we've seen four balls in this over so far, one of which he's got he's got wrong and he's got punished uh, because he's got too straight on Rulof and Amerva. But the other three have gone past the outside edge. You could see he was almost contemplating the ramp shot. Just try to guide it over Jamie Atkinson, Samuel Badri down a third man, but I reckon if he makes any kind of contact with Soil Tanvi's pace, Badri has no chance. Uh, Badri that actually, um, actually potentially is a catcher. It's that short down here. Oh, that was disappointing. Vakas Barkat. Unusual. Vakas Barkat, normally a very, very good fielder. So that would be, a, that's an anomaly. Yeah, Samuel Badri down here, he is genuinely, genuinely a catcher in there on this ground. As we see Wakas Barkat trying to rectify an error. Kind of just sums up City Kaitak's game, really, doesn't it? Um, kind of what would be a straightforward pickup normally is not gone quite right. Spot on, Simon. Yeah, they've lit the game slip through their legs, 114 for three. Another reason for them to stay in the game till the very end is this is a round-robin format. Theoretically, you could have a situation where run rate comes into play, trying to qualify for the final. And if you are going down, fight till the end, try and get as close as you possibly can. Yeah, this year um, the teams are, are more evenly matched. Uh, last year the Cantons had on paper the better team and it, it, it proved that um, they ended up running out winners. More evenly matched, I expect teams to be beating each other and, and as you say run rates will definitely I think come into this uh, as the deeper we go into this tournament and run rates will be interesting because of the small dimensions of the grounds could be having some extraordinary run rates so Ravi Papara starts off with a slower ball again But he's gone for experience over youth. Possible option he still had of continuing with Manjinder, who really produced something out of nowhere to get rid of Nizakat Khan. I think captain of uh, City Kaita, Riyad Emrit, turns to the wily old fox. You see how Ravi Bapara could be incredibly successful when he's got a target to actually bowl to when batters aren't ever under pressure to score against him it kind of nullifies all of the skills that he has yeah I think you summed up perfectly why they should have had a Manjinder bowling at this stage maybe even the X, X factor of a Wakas Barkat coming and doing something different because Bopara does thrive on, on a middle part of the innings in a 50-over contest where nothing much is happening and you want to continue to keep it that way. Or, of course, prize out wickets when batsmen are trying to come after you. But at this stage, you know, batsmen are happy to just stay back, wait, nudge, single, we're happy. Yeah, that's right. Um, 16 runs off 27 balls, it's, it's, it's pretty much a walk in the park. 
What you'd almost like to see is actually uh, Riyad Emirates bringing the field up and forcing the batters to try and hit over the top, seeing if they can actually create something, get Ravi Bapara to, um, to manipulate a wicket somehow. Do that by manufacturing some artificial pressure. Bring the fielders up. It's a rare dot delivery. He's got six in this spell so far. But you can see uh, with the kind of score they've had to defend, it's not been difficult bowler to get away. That would have been wide, but the batsman then opts instead for a single at the end of the 16th. Just 14 more to get, it's 119 for three. Day one of the Hong Kong T20 Blitz. Going round the world to Neo Sports in the subcontinent, Fox Sports in Australia, BT Sport in the UK, Star Times Africa, ESPN in the Caribbean, OSN in the Middle East, and right here in Hong Kong on iCable Sport. Wonderful global event. Simon, as it's set out to be, and improving year on year. I think that's outside the line. Um, yeah, it's uh, grown exponentially. Um, and I think that's probably typical of Hong Kong, actually. Um, Hong Kong's one of those places that uh, if something's going to go big, it goes big really quickly. And uh, from the first year that we ran the event where it was a, a, a live stream and there were only half the number of tents and no grandstands one overseas player um, to where it's come now uh, which has a potential global reach of 175 million people through through various broadcast partners around the world oh good catch he had to time the jump perfectly Ravi Bopara and he did just that roll off on the Merva falls and Sohail Tanvir finally gets his breakthrough after an excellent spell. Might just be a wicket too late, but nonetheless, they've got to stay in till the very end. Fondamava goes for 19. It's 120 for four. we were talking about and so Il Tambir is, is the man who's actually made the breakthrough Darren Sammy makes his way to the crease as we see a replay here all hit high up on the bat it's not got any any anything of it and, uh, sometimes they're pretty difficult catches to take you assume they're coming a lot quicker than you than you think and uh, Ravi Bapara there to jump time is jumped just right oh, Darren Sammy to the crease World Cup winner J.D. Jaguar's veteran as well. He was here last year. Yeah, you could see the uh, man from the lovely island of St. Lucia is feeling uh, the chill a little bit. He's put on the extra jumper, so you'll know they dress more in black than in magenta. Oh, that's going to be close. That's going to be very close. Ah, oh, Sohel Tanvi is almost asking Darren Sammy, surely, come on. I had a chance there. Unless, unless again, did it pitch outside leg. It's the angle that Tanvir is bringing the ball back in. Asks the umpire. Again, without a word. Yeah, I'm not sure there's anything, uh, anything in there. We'll have to have a look at a few more replays. All I say is if we're necessarily not sure here then probably a benefit of the doubt needs to go to the umpire needs to go to the batter well it certainly wasn't pitching outside leg the previous one this one was and it was just helped along its way by the honorary prime minister of st lucia Terence sammy 
how many people in the world can you count in your hands who have a stadium named after them, an existing, current cricketer? Yeah, there's, there's not, not many, is there, uh, around the world. I think uh, Jimmy Anderson uh, recently, I think, played a test match at Old Trafford that had the, it was the Jimmy Anderson Stadium. Uh, but there aren't too many uh, current players that you turn up at a, at a ground and it's, it's named after you or, or a stadium or a, uh, or a stand. Yeah, for Jimmy, it's just a stand. For him, it's the whole stadium. Correct. The whole island, if you like. Such a character, Darren Sammy. I had the pleasure of interviewing the Honourable Prime Minister of St. Lucia during the uh, Caribbean Premier League, and I cheekily asked the question to the Prime Minister, this guy, if he wanted, could really be uh, the leader of the nation. And the PM said, he is the Prime Minister, I'm only standing in for him. <laughs> Would be, would be interesting governance, I think, under Darren Sammy. Certainly a very good leader, has led, uh, led the West Indies, led various franchise teams around the world, and is a very, very successful cricketer in his own right. As that is an outstanding pick-up shot from Johan Bolter, who just diffuses any uh, wobble. The JD Jaguars have it's 129 for its center. Trying to think of a word to describe that shot, and one comes to mind audacious. You'd have to be daring to do that. You do these days. I mean, you've got guys who are, who are getting inside the line and ramping balls going 150 clicks. Uh, they're, they're fine sweeping, reverse sweeping balls that are. Uh, coming down pretty quickly, you know, so El Tambi is probably getting the ball down there at sort of between 120, 130, click, 130 clicks. So it's almost done and dusted. Just uh, four runs to win. And knowing Darren Sammy, given the fact that uh, he's not really enjoying this uh, Hong Kong winter too much, he'll want to be there for just one more delivery. Yeah, I don't think he's going to want to um, be out there for too much longer. Yeah, he had the right idea. So did Manjinda helping him out with something down the leg side. Yeah, it's just not been City Kaisak's day, has it? Um, struggled with the bat, couldn't really get any any momentum going, genuine momentum going in the innings, kind of stumbled to a look below par score. And then have been uh, what would best be described as ring rusty with the ball, lots of extras. Um, and they've uh, definitely come out second second best here. 15 wides to be exact that's uh, pretty criminal all the more when you're defending just 132 it's not only been from the quicker bowlers we had one from uh, the spinner as well and does he finish it off no he doesn't nearly was Looks disappointed with himself, Darren Sammy. I guess it's over to Johan Boiter to finish things off. For the Hong Kong JD Jaguars in this opening match of uh, the Hong Kong T20 Blitz for 2018. Just coming in at the fag end of a really cold spell here in Hong Kong. <laughs> On another day that would have gone straight to hand. Yeah, I'm not sure that's going to be today, is it? Um, the way the luck's, luck's gone for City Kai Tak. Uh, death by a thousand paper cuts here at the moment. It's single, single, singles. As the field comes up, as the scores are level. You might see something uh, rather violent over the short straight boundary down here towards the commentary box.
just to finish the game off in style, I think, from, from Darren Selmy. He's that kind of character, isn't he? Well, that's not a paper cut to finish. Although I love the expression, death by a thousand paper cuts. But Darren Simon decides, I'll do it my way to finish. And a maximum number seven of the day. They didn't really need too many. That's a seven-six of the tournament. The Hong Kong JD Jaguars win the opening game of the Hong Kong T20 Blitz for 2018. Just not enough runs on the board for City Kaitak. The runners up from last year. A four and a six for big Darren Sami. A good hand from Johan Boiter. And a clinical victory for the Hong Kong JD Jaguars. Good innings from Nizakat Khan, but he didn't really need to do more than that. Yeah, it's a pretty easy, uh, easy canter uh, for, the, for the JD Jaguars after City Kai Tak set a, a below, scot, below par score, 132. Uh, Nizakit Khan led, led the way, Yoan Bota, um, outstanding uh, middle innings, just kept it, uh, kept the run chase on target. And Darren Sammy, like we said, just finishes it off in style by uh, launching something quite violent over the short boundary down uh, down towards the commentary box. Jaguar's scorecard. Fairly emphatic win. Kinchit Shah and Nizaki Khan started off really, really well. Kinchit Shah, 22 from 26, was uh, undone by uh, a good short ball. Bolden was taken by a great catch out at deep square by Ra Kapoor. Nazakit Khan top scored with 48 from, from 38. Some good blows from him. Ricky Vessels came and went pretty quickly. It was uh, done by a good catch down on the deep square boundary by Sohil Tanvir. And uh, Rulof van der Merwe came in, hit some good, good early shots, 19 from 14. And uh, the game was finished off pretty quickly by uh, Darren Sami, who's a six to win the game. City Kaitak bowling figure, so will be outstanding bowling with the, with the ball, one for 20 from his four. All the other bowlers really struggled, Riyad Emirates struggled in particular with wides. Uh, a couple of wickets there for Azaz Khan and, and Majinda Singh. But overall it just wasn't enough runs and uh, JD Jaguars came out on top. So match summary, City Kaitak, 132 for six with Azaz Khan getting them up to that score with a, with a very, very well composed 6.52. Wakas Barkat supporting role for, with 30. Ben Lachlan outstanding bowling along with Nadeem Ahmed for the Hong Kong Jaguars bowling. The Hong Kong Jaguars batting was held together by Nazaki Khan, 48 from 38. And uh, Zoni Sohil Tambir, which was the, the lone supporting role in the uh, the City Kaitak bowling innings, finishing with one for 20 off these four overs. Hong Kong Jaguars win by four wickets. Bit of a warm down, certainly need it. It's really starting to cool down here. And these are the wickets that they did lose. It was a good opening partnership before Kinchan Shah finally hold out to a good catch taken by Rad Kapoor down on the boundary. Hezaz Khan had just come into bowl there after his good innings. He had a terrible over till that point. 16 runs conceded. And that was a little icing on the cake at the end of the over. And then uh, Sohil Tanvi plucked us out of thin air. Ricky Vessels is looking to start, kickstart his innings, which never really got going. By this time, it was comfort zone already for the uh, Jaguars. They were looking good to overhaul this 132. Manjinder Singh, the first ball he bowled. Coming in with an absolute snorter. Perfect delivery, getting rid of Nizakat Khan, too short of 50. A good comeback and a good announcement for a possible national place for Manjinder. Right towards the end, uh, Sohil can be picking up roll off Font de Merva. High up on the bat. Never really going to be enough. It was uh, Nizakat Khan's innings. 
that really set them on their way. He had a slow start and uh, these highlights won't really indicate the kind of discomfort he was in his early in his innings. Almost four chances that he gave. An LBW not given. A couple of catches that didn't go to hand. But once he started finding the middle of the bat, including that flat six to third man, he was his fluent best. But really what started it off for uh, the JD Jaguars was early in the innings. When City Kaitak batted, Ben Laughlin did not let them get going. Yeah, that's right, lots of uh, slower balls, lots of variations. That was the first first one that we saw. Dragging Ravi Vapara out, getting his bat away from his pad, inducing this inside edge, which went back onto the stumps. Mixing his pace up with some really, really good, fuller, quicker balls. This one dismissing Azaz Khan, who really helped the City Kaitak innings together at that point. The discipline for me, though, very few extras. Uh, they were all the bowlers, they bowled really well as a unit. And uh, they set up this victory more than anything. Yeah, so just a reminder, it's magenta triumphing over yellow on the opening day here. Going to take a quick break and then wrap up things from Hong Kong. Yeah, I can.
Welcome back to Hong Kong. Just a quick reminder what's happened here. The City Kai Tak, who were put into bat, finishing with 132 for 6, uh, 52 of 37 balls. Ezaz Khan played brilliantly, but it was uh, Nadeem Ahmed and Ben Lachlan who really made, made sure they didn't get any more than that. 138 for 4, pretty easy going for the Jaguars. Nizakat Khan top scoring with 48 of 38, and he had plenty of help from the captain, Kinchit Shah, and Roloff von der Merwe. Just about time for the uh, post-match presentation here, and I'd like to start by interviewing the uh, runner-up captain here. Can I please invite Riyad Emrit of the City Kaitak. Riyad, uh, tough luck today. You just didn't have runs on the board. I knew you wanted to bowl first. Yeah, um, I thought we had about 20, 25 runs short. Um, the wicket isn't, wasn't what we expected, um, to be honest. It was a bit sticky at the beginning, and it was difficult for a stroke playing. But, you know, having said that, they bowl well, they use the conditions well, and, you know, it was difficult to, de to defend 133. As a batting unit, you never really recovered from your top order, the recognized batters, as it were. But uh, what an innings from Ezaz Khan pushed up the order? Yeah, he, um, we know the, his capability and he know the condition better than most of us. So he played really well. Uh, what, what we did, um, what they did well is they caught wickets consistently. We keep losing wickets. And it's always difficult for two new batters to be at a crease on a wicket like that. Now, obviously, it's a quick turnaround for you. You're playing early tomorrow morning. What are the lessons you'll take from here, of course, as Az Khan, from the bowling department as well? Yeah, um, we, we need to keep wickets in hand. And the guys, obviously, who are set to try and bat through the, the innings, if it's a wicket like this, you know, first thing in the morning, probably the wicket is going to be the same. There's not much sunlight, so it's going to be a lot of moisture in the wicket. So if we have the, to bat first again, you know, we have to, to learn as quickly as possible and, and try to, to manipulate the bowling. Tough luck today, Riyad. Good luck for tomorrow morning. Thanks, man. The runner-up captain from City Kaitak, Riyad Emrit. I'd like to now invite Kinchit Shah, the victorious captain from the Hang Hom JD Jaguars. Kinchit, well done. Yes, it was a good toss, of course, to win, but nonetheless, you had to go out there and execute with the ball on that fresh pitch. Yeah, 100%. Um, the quick early wickets of Andrew and Roth and Carl Kozio kind of set the tone for the boys, and uh, we decided that we want to squeeze them now and we had three quality spinners who did the job for us. And what you did well is uh, you used your quicker bowlers and your spinners well in tandem. The experience of Nadeem Ahmed really coming to the four, four overs on the trot. Yeah, he's, he's done really well for the national team and he's been bowling really well and he's been in great form so he's just carried it into the blitz. And at the toss, you of course mentioned Ben Lachlan still celebrating the big bash. It looked like he was just uh, hitting the ground running. Yeah, 100%. He was spot on from the first ball and he did the, he did, he did the job for us. So he's a good death bowler and uh, bowled great Yeah, in the end. Just a quick one to finish with the bat. I know you opened up. There wasn't that much of a run chase. But going into your next game, do you feel anything to change in the batting department as well? No, really, because what we believe in is to play positive cricket and that is what T20 cricket is about. Just go there, express yourself and play positive. Well done today. Good opening win. Thank you. Well, that uh, remains to find out who the uh, player of the match was. We had some good performances. Of course, Nizakat Khan with a commanding 48. We had a couple of good bowling performances. But for the man still celebrating a big bash victory, it was an excellent bowling performance from Ben Lachlan. He is our man of the match today. And there he is, just picking it up. Well done, Ben. I know uh, we mentioned at the toss, a little bit of extra pressure on you, just coming off one victory, everyone expecting you to do the same. Oh, not too much pressure, but no, it was good fun to get over here and uh, not get a nice win in our first game. Just tell us about that surface out there. It's a fresh pitch, a bit of grass covering, but not quite what you'd expect from a green top. Uh, no, it wasn't too bad, I don't think. It's a little bit different to what I've been playing on, but um, I think it played pretty well. I think if the... Had I got more runs, it would have been we would have batted a lot differently. So, no, good wicket to start off with. So, really good. I know you rely on uh, unpredictability and that slow delivery, and we could almost see a different one coming out each time. Do you start planning newer and newer ways to outfox the batsman? Oh, not really. Just got a couple of tricks that I try to stick to. So, hopefully, they uh, keep working well for me. Looking at the opening day's victory, obviously the batters didn't have much of a challenge. How do you look at the next game coming up? Yeah, we're going to day off tomorrow, so that'll be nice. I'll catch up on some sleep, and then uh, we'll prepare for the next game then. But no, pretty good team all around, so I think our bowling department's working really well, and hopefully the batters can kick in a bit more next game. All the best for that, and well done, and well bowled today. Cheers. Thank you. Our player of the match for the opening game, Ben Lachlan. 
Just another reminder, today was the first day of the 2018 Hong Kong T20 Blitz. It was City Kaitak taking on the Hong Kong JD Jag Jaguars and the Kaitak will have a quick turnaround. They're back tomorrow morning, local time, 10 o'clock. We'll see them in action against Hong Kong Island United. The first of a double header tomorrow. In the second match, we'll see the defending champions, the Kowloon Cantons taking on the Gladi Galaxy Gladiators from Lantau. An action-packed day is what we expect tomorrow. It's been a great start to the tournament. Plenty more of that to come. And from the entire team here, from the players, from the spectators, and from all of us, it's goodbye from Hong Kong.